Open bar, dude! And I am with Mauler and the drinker Getting trashed with the web screen pictures A cheap night cause I'm feeling kinda thrifty Gonna send back a beers and a bottle of whiskey Hop up the cork, have a glass of wine hey. I'll stay all safe, i will be fine Trouble walking in a straight line But for the Amino Noir It's open bar With our host, Mauler and the critical drinker And speak of the devils and they shall appear. Here is Mauler and the Critical Drinker. Hello. Yay, it's just <laughs> good drink, <guys>. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not pissed by the end of the stream, we're doing something wrong, man. I yeah. hope you have some kind of beverage in your hand this evening. Mm -hmm. In your, your tentacles of logic and so on. We'll allow water, but I mean, you know. Yeah. Nah, that's the devil's <laughs> drink. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm glad you've been able to to come away from Elden Ring for a couple of hours, man, to do this stream. So oh, I appreciate it. And people were like, "Are you on open bar?" And I was like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> I was starting to wonder if you were you were going to come in for this. <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit, I've not heard from Mauler today, but I know he's uh, he's playing a lot of Elden Ring. He's going to get deep like, involved in this." I just said your message like, "Drigger, I'm sorry, a family member's died. I'm just, I'm busy. I have to sort yeah. out." And you're like, "I can see you streaming." And I'm like, "What?" Yeah, it's, like, like... it's my coping mechanism. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, we've got a great show tonight, and uh, we've got a great panel of guests here this evening. Uh, first of up, we've got uh, Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. Hey, man, thanks for coming on for this. Hey, yeah. Sorry, I just just put down Elden Ring, uh, so uh, I can set aside <laughs> about ten minutes. And um, should and we all just go our separate yeah. ways and play Elden Ring right now? Yeah, <laughs> we'll stream but it simultaneously. The good news is, is, is uh, I won't die every thirty-two seconds uh, on the stream at least, because that's essentially yeah. what happens on Elden Ring. I, every time I die, I tell myself, I'm like, stop getting into confrontations, Jeremy. Just continue. And every time I see somebody, I have to go fight them. And yeah. every time I end up dying, so. Yeah. Uh, it's a fantastic <laughs> game though man it is the, the 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 exploration is incredible the scope so good so uh and thank you for giving us a game that doesn't hold our hand and just oh, brutally fuck, like, beat your ass <laughs> over and over these have, have you seen the disco surrounding this shit it's just like wait this game doesn't have microtransactions in it it's like they don't have to they never <laughs> did <laughs> like, yes. that's the whole point yeah, yeah. it's it's uh it's a breath of fresh air i mean uh, last year uh, contrary to popular belief, I know everyone thinks I don't like women in my entertainment. My favorite game was Metroid Dread, uh, which was a pretty <laughs> challenging game in, in its own right. Um, but this is next level, and so and I've never played a Dark Souls game before. Uh, oh, I mean, wow. not like not in depth with. Well, I've kind of dabbled with them, but mm. this is the first time I've really gotten involved with a Dark Souls game incredible so oh, hey I'm glad you're enjoying it man uh yeah as, uh, we may as well like pull one out for, for as who's likely in a coma right now from having played it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes. yeah i don't know man like uh, i biked the wrong horse because i got horizon <laughs> forbidden west and i started streaming that i was like i, I, like, like I feel like i'm involved in it now and i have to see it through it's just yeah. like a, a purgatory that i've got to endure but uh <laughs> nah, to be fair it, it's uh it's got a pretty good open world to it um and it's fun to explore but i'm looking forward to playing elden ring once that's done once it's like totally irrelevant and nobody's interested anymore then i'll start streaming it <laughs> perfect <laughs> there you go uh but yeah we've got our next guest on who is yellow flash hey man how's it going Good, good to be here. I'm also taking a break from Elden Ring. <laughs> this good news for you, Jeremy. There are no women in Elden Ring. Just <laughs> yeah, exactly. a and a <laughs> oh, right up my alley. So you Did, see, didn't... drinker, drinker picked a game, the female-led a game, made a mistake. Should have went with the uh, with Elden Ring. You know, now, man, I I'm I'm elevating female voices in the gaming sphere. You know what I mean? Like I'm doing my bit. Like anyone who calls me who says I'm not a feminist, well, fuck you, because I I'm enduring Horizon for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, the truly hilarious thing about that is the developers of Horizon are very upset that Elden Ring has pretty much <laughs> taken and stolen oh, yeah. all of the Oh, game yeah. Game like, them. Elden Ring has absolutely bent Horizon over a table, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. brutal. They were, they were openly complaining about it, the developers. Were, yeah. Um, yeah. You know what sucks is you had the opportunity to say how awesome that this game is successful. It goes to show that players are still in this for, like, you know, things beyond, like, 
fucking little pieces of rewards and all these kinds of like just just noises and levels of satisfaction based on and then charging for it. So it's like, wow, players are digging into a single player game for the most part for hours on hours. And the developers have given you what is essentially I don't know if you guys know this. This fucking game is enormous. Okay. It's, yeah. This is this is unprecedented as far as I'm concerned. I've never come across a game that's so big that I'm like, guys, maybe you should have made two games. <laughs> so like, this is, you, yeah. you're really giving it and every time you finish an area you're like so that's the map right i've done it that is the whole map and you're like no no that's not even half and you're like what yeah. and then dude did you, any of you guys have the moment of wait there's an under part to the map there's a there's yes. an underneath part to this map <laughs> like the, yeah. the map's well, like, already enormous yeah i i've been i've put about 20 25 hours into it so far and i've done nothing just because it, <laughs> I'm just exploring, you yeah. know what I mean? I'm just exploring, and uh, and I've I've stayed away from looking at any tutorials or any because I didn't want to. Like I said, I'm very not I'm not knowledgeable in Dark Souls games, so I I went into this just and this game just throws you out there. It tells you nothing. It gives you no direction, and so I've I've actively stayed away from seeing anything that anyone else has done just so I can experience it on my own. I've been trying and, to do that too. I, I'm just. I can't stop exploring. It's absolutely the, fantastic. The That's only thing of a well-made world, though, isn't it? It's like you, you can almost ignore the main story quests and just like you just want to head out into the the world and explore it and just see what's yes. out there. That's, Lots of surprises That's pretty good. in this game. This is a game where you can be picking flowers and be like, ah, and then a giant bear bursts out of the <laughs> yes. fucking ground and starts eating you. That happened you. to You're me. Like, ah. Yeah. yeah. It happened to me. It was really. Funny. <laughs> I was just now, exploring a part of a map and there were a couple bears and then all of a sudden this gigantic bear just runs out and just murders me you know? yes it's, it's so oh, good gosh reality <laughs> there's someone in chat 80 hours in i've not done much at all <laughs> yeah damn a lot <laughs> i spent about I, I spent about 10 hours just farming when i first got it because i love the grind in these games all the souls games i don't know what it is but i can just grind and listen to live streams for hours and I'm like already a level sixty, and I don't even I haven't even beaten the second area. <laughs> Dude, I was I was like rushing the mainline quest a, a little, and then when that guy just floored me, uh, Mirgot, whatever the fucking guy's name is, Midget, I I don't know. But when he did that, I was like, all right, I'm gonna go chill out in the world for a bit. But I'll come back. I'm gonna kick your ass one day. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Someone's likened it to, uh, yeah, like why they like Fallout so much. And I guess a similar idea, like in, in the world of Fallout, you could just go for a wander across the wasteland and you might just, you know, you might find a random ruin and suddenly there's like a little trapdoor that leads you into this massive like bunker complex underneath that you never even knew was there. Yeah. And it's like a whole side quest that you just would completely have passed by, not even noticing it. Um, and there it is. And it's like, yeah, I love that, uh, that just a world of like, endless possibilities almost yes. sitting there for you to explore yeah i mean the other day i was uh i, I was i i jumped across this uh, this area uh that i was like i wasn't sure if i could make the jump and so i found an area where i could do my <laughs> double jump uh and i made the double jump and i was like go in this new area i'm like oh okay it's like dude stay focused let's just explore don't get sidetracked one thing happens and it leads me down to this cave and two hours later i'm like I got distracted, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Because that's just like I, and I had to, I had to actively tell myself, go back out, keep exploring. Yeah, it's, and so if it's anybody's similar. on the fence about it, it's a fantastic experience, but do not think it's going to hold your hand, and it's not easy, and that's the beauty of it. Are you going to go back and play the original Dark Souls games now? Because you should, because they're amazing. Yeah, I mean, this is well, this is one of those things. It's almost like anything else. I mean, this is the what. This is what entertainment should be across the board. Um, it should make you, uh, if you stumble across something, you know, three, four, five into it, and that's your first experience, it should be so good that it makes you want to go back and retroactively experience the world. And that's exactly what this game has done. I talked about it like, um, I know this is off subject a little bit, but still on point, but like, there's the Star Wars uh, theme park at Disney World, which is absolutely trash. And it gives you no <laughs> motivation to want to learn about Star Wars if you've never did. But if you go to the Harry Potter world at Universal, yes, which I did. And I'm not a big Harry Potter fan. I went to that world. The first thing I thought when I left was I want to learn more about Harry Potter because this world's incredible. So that's what Elden Ring has done for me is I'm like, yeah, I want to experience these Dark Souls games retroactively. And that's what good entertainment should be right there. 
Yeah. Agreed, but, man. Fucking hell, yeah. The, dude, this is like peak gaming in terms of content for the consumer. Uh, customer, I should say. Consumer. Uh, <laughs> well, the thing is, I've, I've been consuming the fuck out of this. I've been like a, <laughs> just absorbing it like a sponge. So... Uh, it was funny. There was um, there was this little lady witch person who was like, uh, "I can give you a thing you want if you get me a thing." And I was like, "Where's this thing?" And she was like, "Well, you know, it's gonna be located." Blah 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 blah. Uh, the, the, the when you beat a boss, a comet hits the the world, and you and I think it was implied to be there. And I was like, oh, "All right, I'll just go there. Easy." I saw the the place where the comet had hit, and I was like, "Yeah, okay. I guess I'll go down there. It's probably gonna be some item. That's cool." You know, kill a couple things, walk through a couple tunnels, open a door. Welcome to the city of Necron. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay. And that took the entire stream. I was expecting to just talk to her and get something, but I was like, oh, guys, give me a sec. I gotta do a whole fucking area that I didn't even know existed. Nice. Uh, oh, we've also got Chris here. Chris Gore from Film Threat. Hey, man. Hey, hey, drinker. How's it going? Mahler. Uh, good. Thanks, mate. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming in for this tonight. Yeah, thanks. And uh, Yellow Flash, good to, good to chat with you. Yeah, good to talk to you again. Yeah. Although I, I disagree with you vehemently <laughs> about something you posted regarding the Batwomen writing staff. Working at fast food is hard. I worked at <laughs> <laughs> I worked at Burger King. That was for a summer. That was rough. And <laughs> way more difficult. I mean, like, so kind of disagree. Oh, no, I, I've done it, too. I was just, you know, this in a real world, that's where they would be working. I Not... At well, the CW, failing upwards and do another show. One would hope. Well, 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 Chris, are you allowed to be on a stream with someone you disagree with on Twitter? Because I've I've learned that if you disagree with someone on Twitter, you're not allowed to ever talk to them. You are platforming, and that yeah. is wrong. <laughs> yeah, you're plat. Yeah, it's it's that's pretty stupid. dangerous. So that's stupid. The only people who say that are children, which is <laughs> you know, I, you know, you, that, um, there's you, a lot of those going around on Twitter these days, <laughs> like children inhabiting the bodies of adults. A lot of kids have access to Twitter. Yeah, no. they announced more details about uh, Gotham Knights. It's not just Carrie Kelly. It's some Trevor guy. I don't know who he is. That's the new adopted son, and he's escaping. He wants to escape Bruce Wayne's wealth and privilege. Oh God. <laughs> So That's what great. is this another CW show? Yeah, the, and but they've promoted the Batwoman team to oh, no. it, so they're, they're how, failing upwards. Why would you do that? How did the CW get these rights? How did they get the rights to these characters? Uh, Who allowed this to happen? Them. Whose fault is this? Honestly, it's like we you know, we came out of something like The Batman, which, you know, it had its issues, but overall, like it was a fairly satisfying movie, and it's like it it pretty good take on the character. And then you get something like Batwoman and, and the, the CW's take on it. And it's like, how do I reconcile these two things? Awful. It's, it's one of the crazy. worst shows I've ever seen in my life. It's pretty funny, it's, though. It's so awful. I, I watched one. I watched the first episode of the second season. And I was doing it with the intent to you know join my brother Az and my friends at EFAP and just roasting it. And I couldn't even watch the second. Yeah, that's one. all this I is like. So to watch. bad. This is so bad. I couldn't do it. It's so we, bad. Did, did yeah. we watch it for, for EFAP movies or something? Like we all watched we, it together. That was uh, yourself, Drinker, Jay Longbone, and As. I think were invited to that recording. I would have had you in, uh, Jeremy. I didn't know if you would be interested. That would be pretty funny. I think. <laughs> was, I don't know if I'd want to watch Batwoman for eight hours. <laughs> oh, it's, don't I mean, worry. It's just the one episode. <laughs> yeah, we got through one episode, and it was baffling. <laughs> Um, I, I just, I just love the fact that Ruby Rose had fucked off, and it's like, oh, yeah. what do we do? <laughs> we just, uh, I, she, she died in a plane crash, and her suit fell out, so someone else finds it. Ah, she's Batwoman now. Perfect. <laughs> Move on. No problems too. <laughs> Some neck jumps right in. in. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Crime no, fight is easy. Yeah. Oh man, it's just, um, yeah, I, I'm that and Star Trek Discovery. I'm convinced there's some kind of like tax evasion scheme or money laundering scam or something it's like they're just there to eat up resources and it's it's all like written off because they they, they can't be making money man the, those those shows have got to be disastrous financially well and you got picard but i'm hearing Ugh. like no buzz about that at all i, I cares because that first I, season was awful yeah, I tried watching it tonight just to try and prep for the stream just so I could talk about it a little bit, and I got like 20 minutes in, and I was like, just like, was like no. <laughs> so I'm seeing less about it that I did for Boba Fett. Uh, it's like, damn, dude. Yeah. 
there, there's no interest in it because, well, yeah, like you say, the first season was so shit. Nobody's going to come back for this. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there's going to be three seasons, isn't there? Because they've wrapped filming on season three. They did? I didn't even know that. I, I saw an article yeah. saying that, that they just wrapped season three's filming. Like it was almost back to back or something. Yeah, wow, yeah. Uh, Gary's so excited. Yeah, G- Gary's G- Gary stop. He's been spam texting me uh, since that announced me. So happy, he just sends hearts, uh, broken hearts, but they're hearts. <laughs> uh, <Yeah>. so- <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Speaking of which, like broken hearts and and shit things and and seeing characters destroyed. Like uh, we we got the teaser trailer for Kenobi. <laughs> Um, oh, no. so that's going to be a show that comes out. I, I yeah. have no, like, I felt nothing. Like, I am beyond anger uh, with Disney Star Wars. You're into and apathy. It, yeah, I just, I don't care. Um, you know, the first thing I thought of when I saw that trailer was Battlefront 2. And because Battlefront 2 introduced Aiden Versio, you know, of the Empire. Uh, you know, strong black female who's on the Empire side. And all I'm thinking is that there's going to be some type of reasoning why. Yes, that's exactly what I think is going to happen um, with this, because they put a lot of emphasis on the female Inquisitor. They put a lot of emphasis on her. Yep. And yeah, just, you know, seeing Luke Skywalker there, uh, you know, it just. It's just too much, man. I, I, you know, now, now suddenly, now suddenly we're going to do a uh, duel of the fates and, you know, oh, now we love the prequels. Now remember the prequels. It's like, it, it's, it's amazing, I have no, it? yeah, this, I have this is, no desire to, to see this. This, this is what I was going to say. Like take duel of the fates out of that trailer and it's, it's a big old nothing burger. Dude, it yes. worked. Um, we watched it for a live stream on an EFAP mini, and uh, we were just very cynical, right? The second they played this, we were like, okay, all right. Oh, they you gotcha, just, see? Yeah, stealing the shit. Yeah, you remember, but like, uh, you know, we checked the comments on the video, and there's certain threads on Reddit. People are going nuts. They're like, oh, when they put that music, I was sold. I'm watching every episode of this. It's like, that's all it takes. Yeah, what yeah. memories. It, I mean, it's how literally do you... just a cool soundtrack. That's how all you, you got. How do you look at all the things that they've done? And get excited anymore for Star Wars. Every single thing they've done, except I I liked Rogue One. Even like the Mandalorian was okay, but if you take Baby Yoda out of that show, I don't, that show has even more problems. Solo is trash. All three uh, Disney episodes were trash. Boba Fett was hot garbage. Like they've, they have not proven themselves to be capable of making anything worth, worth anyone's time. It's going to be bait and switch. I agree with Jeremy 100%. I think it's going to be a bait and switch show. It's going to be that Inquisitor chick. And it's just, it's going to have serious problems. They can make a nice trailer, but they have yet to prove themselves on anything with this franchise. Yeah, I, I'd almost, I can't get excited. I'd almost rather watch a show called Inquisitor Chick. I think that would be, <laughs> be a better show. But well, I, dude, I, um, it wasn't much Kenobi in that trailer, was there? Nope. Uh, nope. No. I just think that all this new Disney Star Wars content has not improved the way we look at the original trilogy. The original trilogy, is, I mean... It, made it, it worse. It has made it worse. Every new piece of content has just made it worse. So I look at this and I'm like, okay, like, I do think I'm, I'm, I'm only mildly excited because I think there's unfinished business that could be interesting. Because even with George Lucas famously, when he shot, you know, Revenge of the Sith, he forgot Obi-Wan Kenobi had to pick up, you know, Anakin's lightsaber to give it to Luke. They had to do that as a reshoot, you know, an insert shot, which is kind of ridiculous. But there there are a lot of things that like, well, why would Obi-Wan Kenobi know this? Why does he lie so uh, so badly to Luke? You know, to I mean, I don't know. I, I think it could be interesting. Here's the thing. It's Disney's doing this. So my faith is completely broken. Like it, it, yeah. it doesn't matter the people behind it. I mean, I just, I just tweeted something about how nerds we had a good run and I kind of, <laughs> feel like, but yeah. here's, here's the thing. George Lucas and Spielberg for that matter are legit nerds. If you've looked at documentaries or follow those guys, they are nerdy about a lot of things, not just like, you know, not just like things like flash Gordon, Marvel comics or whatever, they're legit nerds about a lot of different things. The people running things now were never nerds. They're not shepherds of a franchise, 
right? And I think that's where there's no person to point to, even with this like Lord of the Rings show coming up from Amazon, right? There's no shepherd that's in charge of it. You know, the you know, your Gene Roddenberry's, your George Lucas's, the, the, you know, that they're they're gone. Right. So so it's really just corporate culture is running these franchises, which is why they just always turn out like shite uh, to quote the drinker. So, yes, good use <laughs> of the word. Yes. Um, yeah, it, it's like, you know, art by committee. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and it's such a shame because, you know, they've got you know, they've got these great characters. They have the rights to them now and they have, you know, the actors, I guess, are still willing to come back for a hefty paycheck, I'm sure. But, you know, to get Ewan McGregor back to play Obi-Wan Kenobi again, like 15 years after Revenge of the Sith, man, that's a hell of an accomplishment. And you would just think, like, they, they really ought to do that justice. They, they ought to have a story that's suitably epic. And I just have no faith in their ability to do no. that. Yeah. Um, what a sad reality too, because if you look at if you're a huge fan of uh, let's say Babylon Five, right, a lot of the main actors for that have passed away. So there's no hope of like bringing them back as a sort of thing that's a fun reference or even a way to send them off with them, maybe a movie or d different kinds of things like that. It's like with Star Wars, we had like everything. Everything was available, yep. and uh, and they had the money and they had the willpower, and that's what we got. How like, do you have all of those characters ready to come back and not have one scene? One scene where they're all in the Millennium Falcon cockpit. That just that blows my mind still to mean, this like, day. How did we roll so unlucky? <laughs> like, really? Of all the realities, there was one out there that got all the stuff. We said, you're like, well, we had the resources. I mean, I likened it to having like an open goal from like the, the you know, the five yard line and still missing. And like yeah. that, that's really what it feels like. <laughs> It's like you had everything set up for you. you. You almost couldn't fail, and yet you found a way to. And did yeah, you know I mean, they did? They know. Like yes. we would have ended up with a lot more movies by now. Yeah, I mean, I've I've seen some people criticizing the, you know, oh well, he even looks like he looks significantly older, you know, um, for this particular situation and all of that. Which I, I can understand that, but I can also like I can I can suspend disbelief on that if everything else is working, you know what I mean? But it's like, that's just another thing that makes this entire project seem ridiculous. You had an opportunity to bring Ewan McGregor back five years ago. You know, if you really want, if this was really your passion project to try, try to tell these stories, you know, but it just seems like everything they're doing is you're doing exactly what fans said they want. You're trying to do exactly what fans said they wanted five years ago. But you kept telling us, you know, little things like kill the past, let it die. You know, these are the new characters. You know, you introduced all of these new characters in The Force Awakens and you essentially pushed all of the legacy characters to the back. And fans kind of said, hey, we would want to see more Han, Luke and Leia. And you're like, no, no, no. You get these new characters because these this is the future of Star Wars. But now everything they're doing is just going back to <coughs> the source of it all to try to pull us back in and it's just it's not working for me at least i understand there's still gonna be a lot of people that are going to respond to this this is going to do big numbers well, there it has a lot of people that actually liked appeal. boba fett it, this yeah. this this show is just like <laughs> this is like an abusive husband that's like oh my god i'm sorry i've i've learned my lesson i've changed my ways i've stopped drinking never gonna hit you again you know, and just I'm gonna I'm gonna make everything right. You know, I'm gonna treat you right from now on. Um, and you know they're not gonna you're, they're gonna lapse back into their old ways. Of course yes. they are. Um, and that that's what the show is. It's just like uh, trying to do every possible thing, like jangling every possible key in front of you. You know, remember, you know, remember Obi Wan. Remember the duel of the fates. Remember Darth Vader. We're gonna have it all, man. It's gonna be amazing. This is gonna be real Star Wars again. It's like no, it's not, because it's made by you, you <laughs> fucking corporate soulless assholes. I don't yep. trust. I wouldn't trust you to make me a cheese sandwich. Never mind a fucking TV show. <laughs> I, I do have a prediction. I do have a prediction, which is maybe more of a wish, is that the Inquisitor in the Kenobi show is hunting Jedi. And they all end up being redheads. I think that would be, I think that would be perfect. But uh, you know, on that note, it's weird. Like you know, like we just see in this Carrie Kelly thing is just so 
random. Like also who cares? I'll never watch that show. Right. Like, I think that all that stuff, anything that sort of dances around the Batman, <clears throat> I want to see a show with Batman in it, you know, like like um, the Smallville series, which I always hated, was about let's take all the parts of Clark Kent's life and only show you the boring parts. Let's just and show make all it of, a teenage drama. Yeah. Over 10 seasons. It was it was pointless. But I just learned this like I, I use Final Draft to write scripts for various projects and whatnot. <clears throat> I didn't realize this. Final Draft has a feature. They've got a lot of things you can do with Final Draft. You can analyze your characters. You can export, like, you know, characters, lines, um, all the settings and whatnot. But there's a new feature on Final Draft, and I just, in the private chat, dropped a video about it. Um, it analyzes your script. It's called inclusivity analysis to analyze your screenplay. <laughs> Final Draft, by the way, is the, is the screenwriting software that everyone in Hollywood uses, for the most part, for television and film. So this is a new feature that they've touted in their software that... So uh, wait, wait, wait. An, uh, like basically a machine tells you if your script is inclusive enough. Correct. And there's a, <laughs> there's a video on from Final Draft's channel. I just put it in the private chat. I, you know, probably, I think I sent it to Ryan Cannell because he's kind of the go-to for all that. But um, I kid, I kid because Jeremy's here. <laughs> but... Um, you know, Ryan, but, break it down. He can count those black people. So. Exactly, exactly. Right? <laughs> He's good at counting, man. He's got I mean, a keen eye. I had to give him a pay raise on Tuesday night's main events past week because uh, we had more we had more non-white people than white people, and he's like, I can't do this. And I was like, I'll give you another 500 bucks. So he's like, okay. <laughs> and of the white people, okay. they're all evil. It's just like, like I'm in. <laughs> it's just weird as a creator, rather than your blank page sitting in front of you to you know write a script or come up with a story, you've got this little tab feature that's going to you know, sort of in, in, a, in a way just completely reanalyze your script and say – not enough inclusivity. You've got to do this. You have to, you know, add, consider adding a side character, whatever it is. It's, I, I just think it's, it's strange. It's weird. It's another thing like the, it's weird. It's, um, it's another it's thing. Like, oh my God. Give the main character a prosthetic leg. Yeah. Well, see, I'd like to see, see, this is the thing with, you know, and it was a weird amount of female characters in the Kenobi trailer that they just sort of did a montage and there's like a female Imperial officer, a female, you know, just like, and I was just like, okay, that's cool. It's fine. But why don't you just treat them like regular characters? It, it always bugged me that Ray didn't suffer at all. I mean, she didn't like have an arm, like it's sort of your tradition. You know, you're going to be a kick-ass Jedi. You're going to lose some limbs and nothing. And I, I predict that none of these female characters will suffer, will, will suffer at all. I, I think that yeah, there's there's a problem with doing that, and I guess we all know what it is in that you, right. you can't really depict female characters getting badly injured um, or maimed on screen because it brings up the the pretty uncomfortable idea of violence against women, um, and so they won't show it. I think the closest Ray gets is like she gets a little cut on her arm, which doesn't affect her in the slightest way. Like she's able to keep right. uh, fighting just just normal, um, and yeah, that's which, it. It's amazing. Have you ever gotten a really bad paper cut though? I mean. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to see women have to get one on the thumb. And, and it, it's what's bad about there it. There we it, go. <laughs> <laughs> if, <laughs> More boobs. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. And, and I hate I hate that we have to, you know, even break things down from this perspective because this is a reaction to Hollywood consistently telling us that this is what they're going to do. It's not so I mean you can go back to, to films in the 80s and the 90s or like look at Harvey Dent, you know, in the in Tim Burton Batman, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. no one was complaining about that because it didn't matter because we weren't constantly being preached to Hollywood by Ho to Hollywood or from Hollywood that we need more representation and diversity. We need more non-white people in movies. So whenever you saw like something and I brought up on Friday Night Sites about I can't remember the name of it. It's a film with Morgan Freeman was the president. Was it like Outbreak or Deep, Deep Impact or something? Yeah. So um, no one cared about that. No one was complaining about things like this because it was like, hey, this works. This is a great actor in a role. It works. But there's this huge theme now surrounding Hollywood where they're telling you, hey, we don't care about continuity. We don't care about lore. We don't care about history. We care about identity politics. And we're going to compromise the story simply for identity politics and that's why so many people react to it because hollywood has consistently told us this is what we're going to do and so it sucks 
Do you, do you think, because um, I've often questioned, like, what's the source of this and, and what fans the flames? <clears throat> do you think it's the media that, that really whips people up into this um, this frenzy of identity politics? Because they, they tout every time there's a, a, a black character on screen or every time there's a woman in a, in a lead role, you know, and, and, and from their point of view, they're, they're gushing with endless articles about how we're smashing glass ceilings and pushing yes. the boundaries of representation. Um, and, and most of the time, it's like it's stuff that's been done a million times before, but the, it always has to be that angle. It always has to be that that first of something. Um, and I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know if people in Hollywood are just like, well, we need to keep the, the news media on side. We need to keep the, the, the movie critics on side. This is what we have to do to keep them um, sweet. You know, we have to keep giving them more of what they want. I think it's pandering to idiots is what it is. It's a new generation that hasn't watched a movie more than 10 years old. I, I don't think that when Ridley Scott was working on Alien in the late 70s, when that movie came out in 79, he didn't think to himself, you know, I want a black engineer in the engine room. Right. He just hired your pet Kodo because he's a fucking brilliant and intense actor. And I yeah. think that that's true for like, no one made a fuss when Sam Jackson was cast as, you know, Agent Fury, right? In, it, you know, for the Marvel movies, because he's Sam motherfucking Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, he's just a great actor. It, when you immediately put this out, and this doesn't, doesn't just apply to casting in movies, I think it also applies to Supreme Court justices. When you immediately put like, this is the type of person we're looking for right out of the bat, it's it's stupid and it diminishes that person that you're casting because th are, are they going to sit there imbued with the knowledge that like, oh, I'm only being cast because of the color of my skin or because of these, you know, traits that I have. Like it's bullshit. Just, you know, Morgan Freeman got work uh, because he's a great actor, you know, in many things. So, you know, I, you know, I, I just I just think that this over analysis of all this stuff, this hyper attention to it. It has made everybody stupid and it's this young generation that wants to think that they're innovators. Everything has been done before. There are no, you know, all, all those glass ceilings were broken a long, a long time ago. And it's, it's utterly ridiculous to, to hyper focus on it. Well, yeah. I mean, like um, I, to drinker's point that this is a, a lot of it is media driven because every time there's a, a non-white actor that gets cast or their role gets criticized, the media will, you know, write articles, endless articles about the hate and the online, you know, hate and the racism and the sexism. I, in my opinion, no other actor has faced more criticism for a role in a superhero geek world movie than when Ben Affleck was announced as Batman. That was the most hate I have seen. It was a collective meltdown beyond belief because Ben Affleck's such a big star. You know what I mean? And Batman is such an icon. When Ben Affleck was cast, I have never seen so much hate for somebody. Now, I personally was okay with that announcement, even though I didn't ultimately like, you know, his version of Batman. A lot of people did. But that was a ton of hate. But no one weaponized it or no one tried to write any articles to try to say, oh, look at all the hate that the white male's getting because it was just a, that's what nerds do. We freak out. We overreact. We have opinions. But uh, it, it Kelly Marie Tran story is still going around out there and there's never been any proof that it ever happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? I felt so. bad. I feel bad for Ben Affleck because he just he does these superhero movies and they always turn out bad. <laughs> I know. It's like you know, Daredevil. I think he looked like he took ten years away from his superhero movies, and you know, <laughs> finally he's ready to come back and give it another try. And like, man, he just stars in clunker after clunker, and it's a shame <laughs> because I've gone. I've said this before. I actually liked him as as Batman. I thought he was a good Bruce Wayne. He looked and good. I liked. I like, how I like the idea are. of like a slightly older, um, you know, more battle scarred um, Bruce Wayne um, going in, going into the fray again. I thought that was all great, and I think he gave a pretty good performance. Um, I, he was just lumbered with shitty scripts. He's, you know, stuck in terrible movies, and that was the sad thing. I just, yeah, I wish he'd gotten a chance to do a solo Batman film. It would have been interesting to see what he could have done when he wasn't fighting like crazy space aliens or like interdimensional demons or any of that garbage just like a good solid batman movie with him in it i mean that's why i was looking forward to him when it was announced because i do i like him i like i like 
you know, the, the town, you know, the, the films he's starred in and, and you know, directed. Uh, I like Ben Affleck a lot. I did not ultimately like his Batman or those movies. Um, but uh, I thought there was potential there for sure. His costume was cool, though. I'll say that much. Yeah. Yeah, I like how we've had three different versions of him on screen as well. Like we've had like the the big like physical powerhouse in Batman versus Superman. Then we've had like a bloated middle aged drunkard um, in in Joss Whedon's cut. And then there's like that weird, really like skinny version of him that they spliced in awkwardly at the end of the Snyder yeah. cut. It's like <laughs> fucking hell, man. <laughs> I, 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 I would have liked to have seen. Yeah, yeah. I like <laughs> He's had an arc off to himself. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that movie too, though, because he was supposed to fight uh, Deathstroke, right? That'd have been an interesting thing to see. Yeah, I've ben never Aff really seen the, that. The, the, yeah, I, I, seeing a Batman movie directed by Ben Affleck, starring Ben Affleck, I think that would have been pretty awesome. I really do. But um, didn't get yeah, it. Yeah, they put they pointed out as well the where I, th I guess they're referring to the warehouse fight in Batman versus Superman, which I I really liked. <laughs> I just loved how he was an absolute machine. I always um, say that you know if that's the case, then his stunt doubles the best Batman ever because Ben Affleck was nowhere near that. Stunt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they took that. That's from a that's from like a really good comic. That whole fight. Yeah, Dark no, it's an, awesome it's an awesome that, scene. It's an awesome. That was. They took like the best part and then put it in a shitty movie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's such a shame. Like, I, I think it was on his trailers that described it as like a good Batman movie trapped within a terrible Superman movie, and that's kind of <laughs> what it yeah. felt like. But like, <laughs> I thought people hated it because he killed people and stuff. I don't yeah. know. I never cared about that. Like, I'm not a comic book purist when it comes to that that sort of thing. So and he killed stuff in the Burton movie. He, he killed all kinds of people. He killed bro, stuff in all bro, of his movies. Opening right? scene of warehouse. Opening scene of it. Batman begins. He goes out of his way to not murder someone by murdering everyone, including <laughs> that someone, so Boy, he can save Liam Neeson. <laughs> I think we can all agree, right? That like the way they get away with it, typically with comic purists, right. is if they have a very good reason, right? Very good reason. He doesn't do it arbitrarily. Yeah. Like if you look at the Harvey Dent one, right at the end of Dark Knight, I don't think yeah. anybody's gonna be like, "Wow, how could you save that child?" Yeah, <laughs> I <wrong> agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the problem with with FX Batman is there's a lot of like unnecessary killing where he could avoid mm. these situations and he doesn't. Whereas in Nolan's films, or even Burton's, I guess the storytelling lends it to where he's, you know, well, where's the justification to... when he hands that fat clown or no, that big uh, muscle bound guy he hands him the bomb and then he blows up and falls in that hole. Yeah, I mean, I don't, yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I don't have a problem. I, all... Yeah. I don't have a problem with the killing. I mean, and I'm the one as much as I love the Nolan movies. I always point out that opening scene in Batman begins where he's like, I'm not going to murder this man. He needs to be tried. That man ended up dead still. Cause you blew the whole place up. Yeah. So, I mean, so everybody him, died. When he well, jumped I mean, on um, the scarecrow's van in the beginning of dark Knight, he like crushes crushed, the entire yeah. front of it. And he's like, yeah. did you think that might kill him? He's like, no, I knew it wouldn't. He's like, really? <laughs> Really? <laughs> no, no one's ever died in an accident like that. So he wasn't no, wearing hockey pads, so it's not a big deal. So yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Someone pointing out here as well. It's a shame that Cavill he got wasted in shitty movies. He was a good oh, Superman. Yeah, I, yeah. I get, yeah he's I agree. A really good Superman. Just man, stuck with shit films, and like he's he's kind of still like half in, half out, isn't he? Like it's not really confirmed that he's quit the role, but I'm sure they're trying to figure that out. Yeah. Right. I, I think Cavill, yeah, I think he he's he should be the biggest star in the world right now. Like he should be in everything because he's that awesome and he just like I hate his Superman movies, but I think he would make a fantastic Superman. Uh, this this right. is the thing, yeah. Like people, people are like, "Oh, who should play the next Bond?" I'm like, "Yeah, Henry Cavill, fucking cast him right now." Yeah, you know, well, the who only should problem, play Superman? Drinker. Yeah, keep Henry Cavill doing it. Who should play Geralt in The Witcher? Yeah, Henry Cavill's doing a great job. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> like, I don't know how he's going to reach the gun out of his jacket in James Bond because they'll have to CGI extend his arms. <laughs> There's this whole joke about his short arms. <laughs> it's oh, good you, ever short seen, arms. you ever seen how short his like he okay, actually does have, no, he, he has I'll, shockingly, I'll let me get a picture. He, he shockingly short arms. This is actually a flash cast lore right here. So <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he does though. Thanks to Flash Cast, they ruined uh, Henry Cavill's arms. So uh, you ruined a man's arms. How could you? <laughs> there we go. 
Cavill's got T-Rex arms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I figured Flash would have this one like ready to pull up in, at any moment anyway. So Well, I know Anna has the picture because it's scarred her. <laughs> I love yeah, how we've, um, uh, we've moved Yeah, people point out as well. So. Um, I would I would definitely not describe his arms as tiny. Like the dude's uh, he's still built like two brick shit houses stacked on top of each other, but uh <laughs> Yeah. Hundred percent. There we go. But uh yeah, I mean um no, I was gonna talk when we were mentioning there like characters that are just absolute beasts. Like I, I don't know if any of you guys have seen it, but I've started watching Reacher. Um and fuck man, that's really good. That took me by surprise. Um, I did not expect it to be as as enjoyable as it was, but uh, yeah, that, that's that's a pretty I, fucking I've heard, good show yeah, so far. I've heard great things about it. The most uh, the most alarming thing I heard was Ryan Kennel likes it a lot, which oh he doesn't God. like anything. <laughs> so for him to like something that says a lot, it must be good. But I have heard a lot of good things about Reacher. I need to check it out. He is like f- for for everyone who is. Like and I, I guess like the woke mob must absolutely hate Jack Reacher because he's everything they despise. Like he's your your absolute alpha Chad of a of a character. <laughs> like he he fucking walks everywhere at his own fucking pace. Like he beats the shit out of everyone who's in his way. Um, he doesn't waste any time even talking to people that he can't be bothered with. Um, yeah, he's that kind of dude, and I think they they just absolutely nailed him. Um, like I wasn't even a huge fan of wait wait we've got Henry Cavill's tiny arms here. <laughs> <laughs> they they just like normal like shouldn't they reach like just below your waist? I don't know. <laughs> they don't go <laughs> they right, right there <laughs> at his waist. They're not too bad. They're not too bad. Poor Henry Cavill. You you, you know what he's doing is because he's like he's got them out at the sides you know because his back's so big like he's kind of like. <laughs> It's fucking flex and everything. <laughs> uh, freaking Henry Cavill. Yeah, I do. I do. I think he'd be good. He'd be fine as James Bond. Oh, absolutely. They're not going to give it to him though. You know what they're going to do for that movie? Yeah. They're not. The they're not going to do it. They will. There's no fucking way they would be dumb enough to do that. And I'm saying that now with absolute confidence, but I'm probably going to get proven wrong. But I just think, God, they must understand the backlash they would get. If they tried to cast anyone except like a, a white male as the role, it's gonna. I, I hope they go all the way and make him gay and non-binary. <laughs> I really do. I hope they do it. If we don't get Leslie Jones as James Bond, I'll riot. So that's what <laughs> yeah. I want. Right there. I want they call Leslie that accelerationism. Jones. Let's yeah. just get I'll, all the crazy I'll, shit I'll, to happen. So yeah. I was I was really hoping for Tessa Thompson. <laughs> 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 I want so Leslie likeable. Jones. I want Leslie yeah. Jones with four kids, uh, all types of responsibilities, still saving the world, still being uh, the, the greatest. So, yeah, that's what I want so, right there. I will be right back. Lance, carry on. All right. He's off to play Elden Ring. I fucking know it. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, life Keep your eyes way. open, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so great. But um, all, I can, all I can do is think about Elden Ring. Why don't you bring it up? I, I forgot about it for 32 seconds. Now I am so sorry. So. I'm so sorry. That's what, I'll, that's what I'll be playing tonight. <laughs> no, man, I need to get it. I need to get it and play it. Like, uh, and I'll be miles behind everyone else. But um, yeah, I feel like I need to experience this game now. Um, but I yeah, so like... it... go ahead. No, no. Um, yeah, I was just gonna. I was gonna round out our our little chat about Kenobi there because I guess we 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 all seem to be like kind of cynical about it and just thinking it's um it looks nice in the trailer, but it's probably gonna be a bit shit based on Disney's track record with this stuff. Yeah, I have I have zero confidence in them, and and I really don't even have interest. I'm probably not going to watch it. I didn't watch the Bad Batch. I didn't watch Boba Fett. And I'm probably not going to watch this. I'm just at that point. I mean, obviously, I, I spent a lot of time covering Disney Star Wars, and uh, I'm just checked out. I'm completely checked out to the point. I don't where, blame you in the slightest. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm like, kind of at that point. Um, I had to really like force myself to watch Boba Fett um, just because there was, uh, I guess, a lot of interest in it, um, almost from 
just that negative point of view, like it's so shit, you need to review it. And I thought, okay, fine, I'll take a look. Um, I couldn't even bring myself to watch like Hawkeye, for example. I just I just lost interest completely in in like Marvel TV shows, mm-hmm. um, and I don't think I'll ever watch that. I just don't give a shit about them anymore. That's where I'm at with it. I mean, I there was some stuff I have enjoyed some stuff they've done. Like I really the the final four episodes of the Clone Wars season seven is fantastic. It's absolutely incredible. Um, you know, um, there were some problems with that season, but not the final part of the season. The final arc was incredible. There's there's capable they had people all that, there. They already had all yeah. that written though. Before yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, and so Disney's fingerprints on things uh, with Lucasfilm. It's it's impacting every single aspect of Star Wars. And so I, I brought up the Star Wars theme park earlier. You go to the the Pandora, the Land of Avatar theme park, which is at Disney's Animal Kingdom. They had James Cameron working with Disney Imagineers to create that. Now, I'm not a fan of the Avatar movie. I saw it one time. That's well, hold it. on a when- second, Jeremy. They had Kathleen Kennedy helping them with that, well that's Star my Wars point Wars. no that's my point so yeah. so the the pandora the the avatar themed land at disney world is incredible it's it's mind blowing it's like nothing you've ever seen even if you don't like the movie like me because they had the creator of the universe working with disney yet you have the creator of the star wars universe around yet they don't seem to want his opinion on anything and that's impacting every single aspect of this universe and you have to ask yourself why. Why do you not reach out to George Lucas? Because they're not interested in benefiting Star Wars in any way. They're interested in doing their own thing and rewriting the history of it. So that's why they don't want George involved. It's disgusting. I think that they they feel they can do better than him. And they're going to make it better and all this. And they're going to improve it. And I think they still think that. <laughs> Oh, those, those, God bless them. They're, they're so optimistic. Yeah. So, Jeremy, when, when are you and Ryan going to the uh, Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel? We all, we all want to know. Ass, uh, yeah. We all want to know. I, I, point blank, point blank. I literally had someone call me up and offer to pay my way in. And I can, if you're going to give me five grand, I can think of a lot of better things to do than to give it to Disney just so we can get kicked out of the theme park because Ryan's going to say some gamer words and then we will never have a park hopping channel because we can't get back into the park. I can't give them that much money for that dog shit Star Wars Galactic Cruiser. It's so horrible. Awful. Right? Yeah, the, the, the rooms genuinely look like prison cells. <laughs> like <laughs> They're oh God, so fucking on. bleak and metal and, and just like so crappy looking it looks so yeah. cheap hold on you don't um, want to do space bingo and line dancing <laughs> yeah for six thousand dollars for two days like man like i wouldn't want a complimentary twilight to be with me 24 7 just to like service my every need you know for that <laughs> i need a slave leia cosplayer <laughs> been to some parties uh with the 501st during star wars celebration that, that i i can confirm i had way more fun than the people that were on this star cruiser i, I watched i sort of went down a rabbit hole and, and watched a whole bunch of videos it, it just i would feel stupid if i were there you're you're literally playing childhood scavenger hunt games it's and and pretending you're in star wars which i did as a kid for free when I was a kid, I used to play with my friends. What we do? We'd pick up sticks, beat the shit out of each other, and pretend they're lightsabers. You know, it was it was fun. I mean, that's not, now Disney's charging you six grand to you know use your imagination, which you know um, you you can do for nothing. It's a, for six grand you could redecorate your room into a Star Wars room, right? I mean, there's so many better. I mean, Jeremy, you said it. There's so many better things to spend money on than that. I'm really curious because now. You've got people going on voyages who paid, who paid to be there. What are their reviews going to be? And and we haven't, I don't think I've seen anything yet. Well, the cancellations have been picking up. So <laughs> when I was, I was, when I was in, when I was in Orlando, because we went to Universal Studios, as long as I was in there with Ryan and Jay, Jay showed us like cancellations were picking up. People have been canceling like crazy based wow. on what we're seeing from it. Um, so there's more information on that you know, on a, a, our 
park hop and channel j will have that information there but the, the theme park stuff has they've been they've been having a lot of cancellations and they deserve it they deserve it because it's um you've got a great opportunity you've got a lot of talented people there uh that work at, at the, the theme parks at, at disney they're not being utilized at all i have There's another not. kenobi prediction oh here's here's my other kenobi prediction kenobi to get off world from tatooine will be embarking on the halcyon which uh that's the oh name god of, no that's the name of the ship the galactic star Cruiser. oh yeah yeah that's oh true. no it, that the that's halcyon? so fucking awful it might just be true yeah it, it's so bad it just might work i think that it's gonna happen i mean come on it's so obvious it's, it's, i'm just not i'm not it, sure it, if they will have the budget to get them off tatooine i think they built those <laughs> sets and it's just like well let's just do that right oh, stick I mean, them there this one, like, there's one shot nice where you, look, you can roll out he looks like he's off world in one of the shots but like the thing is they need him to fight vader right so i assume that's not going to happen on tatooine he's gonna fight him twice well, it's uh, how, how wait, no, how is he going to fight Vader? Because uh, it, it, the that's going to go against just, that's going to go against yeah. the New Hope because it's like the last time I met you. I so the last time we uh, met, I was the apprentice. Now I'm the know. master. Well, so what they'll do, Drinker, is have some kind of vague reference in their fight where he's like, "You still got so much to learn." And then Vader will be like, yeah. "Yeah, I guess so. I guess I really do consider myself as someone who has to win <laughs> in this scenario. <laughs> no, otherwise, it doesn't make sense." <laughs> oh, shoot me, honest to God, this is fucking garbage. You know, for a fact that if you'd said, "Hey, Lucas, you know the scene you're making? Have they fought since Revenge of the Sith?" You'd be like, "No." <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, well, too bad. Never. They haven't even met each other since then. Th well. That's that's it's gonna be so bad. Pay that much attention to to detail, and, and I have to uh, Mahler. I, I'm I'm just getting into your uh, Force Awakens videos. They're epic. Ooh, They're just so incredible. So congrats <laughs> on that. I'll, oh, I'll, I'll talk you. to you in a couple months after I've listened to. Yeah. All <laughs> <of them. laughs> no, the latest one is really good. One. It can take some time. No, it's great. It's great. Oh, it's so oh, it's awesome. Love it. Um, yeah, there's another one here. Um, G4 apparently is um, it's on life support at the moment. I think. Oh um, no shit. <laughs> yeah, who would who would have predicted this? Oh, no. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I know, I know the quarterings put out a video about it today. Um, as soon as Chris, the, as soon as they didn't bring Chris Gore back, that's uh, that's like bring, <laughs> not bringing George Lucas back to Star Wars. It's uh, it was never going to happen. So. <laughs> How, how do you feel about what G4 is now, Chris? Well, a couple things. One, I'm glad I'm not a part of it. Uh, yeah. You know, um, two, I feel bad because there are people there that I know that I worked with that I think have good intentions. I think that, that the network is a victim of the current culture where wokeness has permeated everything and ruined everything i mean it's 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 almost an obligation that's unspoken that they have to you know do things a certain way and what they don't realize is most gamers are pretty apolitical they don't care you know and also they shouldn't even be bothered to even have to think about where they stand politically when you're talking about video games and and entertainment i mean i think we all feel that way but but we're, we've kind of been forced into conversations we never thought we'd be having we thought we'd be talking about how great the moment was when you saw Luke, Khan, and Leia reunited in the Star Wars sequels, which yeah. would have been awesome, you know. I, I, you know, it, and it never happened. I mean, you brought it up, Yellow Flash. I mean, it's something that's just like the real problems with the sequel started in that first movie. The way they killed Han Solo was bullshit. But yeah, back back to G four. I don't know. Like, I don't. I think they have a profound lack of understanding of gamers and in particular youtube when when i'm putting out videos that do that perform better than what's on the g4 youtube channel with a fraction of the subscribers i've you know I'm closing in on thirty thousand subscribers but they've got like four hundred thousand or something like how am i how are my videos doing better like that's ridiculous it just shows like how out of touch they are and the the overproduced nature of it you know they're 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 approaching youtube like it's a low budget tv show um, but they're spending tons of money and what it lacks, the number one thing that G4 lacks is authenticity. Yeah. 
And I think that no, was- like, well, for a start, everyone who's watching this, subscribe to Chris Gore. Like, your 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 channel is called Film Threat, isn't it? Yes, so, yes, thank you for that. Get them to thirty k. Like, go and subscribe to them now. The link is in the description. So oh, click on that just now and get them up to thirty k, please. Um, but for yeah, for another thing, you're exactly right about what gamers are. Like, they're apolitical, and if anything, they're counter to to the the prevailing narrative, which is. Mm. Um, you know, kind of political correctness and being like super sensitive to everyone's feelings. That is the exact opposite of what most gamers are. That's what a show needs to be if it wants to succeed now. Because you you would want to feel as a gamer that um, the show is on your side and it represents your opinions. Um, and that's the exact opposite of what G4 is now. It's the establishment trying to lecture you. Like, who the fuck's going to want to watch that? That's madness. Yep. It, yeah, it should be irreverent. It should be fun. It should be like non politically correct. That's the point of like being a show for gamers. But here's but, here's what I believe is that when G four went away in twenty early twenty thirteen, YouTube replaced it. YouTube took the mantle and sort of took the torch of because there were personalities on that show that you know spoke their their true feelings about whatever it was video games movies whatever thank you uh Terillus 3 Terillus 3 i'm sure i mispronounced that my apologies um but i i think that youtube came along and and people realized like look i just need to know about i i need to just be passionate about things you know and that's what kind of replaced g4 and now that it's like you know it, it's coming back at a time where it's like well why are you here what is the mission statement what are what is your purpose? And truly, it's to have brand partnership deals, I guess, and to kind of recreate your your I don't know nostalgia for that network. And Jeremy, you've said it before. You know, you used to watch it. Even Jeremy in the quartering, I wa I watched his his I I, I watched his thing about it, and it's it, it makes me sad because you know I was a fan of the network before I was on it, and then yep. I was on it for like fucking eight years, but. Um, they really, you don't understand the authenticity is not something that can be even faked, you know, although some actors try, you know, they'll try, actors, they'll try. Yeah. Is it so, just, is this what happens when you you're in it too long and you become too big, you know, I, you just get taken yeah. over by people. You become part of that, that mechanism. Um, and inch it, it's inch, just, man, inch by inch. Yeah. And it, time. it's like, it's easier to just go along with what they want you to do rather than risk your income um by by yeah. going again i would say yes but like i've always like i started film threat out of high school and i've been doing it more than 30 years right so so film threat's been a thing i started i dropped out of college i then wrote books some of those books are like used for, to teach um film in film school which is ironic so that's a big middle finger to higher education right I'm a college dropout. You got to read my book. F you. Anyways, um, but back to what I always did film threat. So even when I was at G4, I was doing film threat, the, which was, you know, a website. We go to film festivals, cover them. We made money through advertising. You know, we launched the website in 96. And, you know, YouTube, we really started only getting into, you know, a couple of years ago more seriously. But um, I always had that as my side thing. G4 was like a freelance gig for me. So... So I think it's a matter of just having like always have your own thing, right? You got to always have your own thing. I mean, look, if if some company wants to hire me as long as it's on my own terms, I'll do it. Um I I I, yo, I always say no because I don't want to and then the more I say no, the more they'll want to pay me, but I don't get those kind of offers anymore. I mean, I and and don't really care. You know, I I don't it, and and I just look at G4 as like it was just many strategic errors going in. And I think the main thing was kind of leading into the political climate that they thought that the audience, I mean, did they ever do like some sort of study of like, well, what do you want out of the new G4? And I don't think anybody would say lectures. Here yeah. we go. This is what they wanted. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Precisely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, this, I mean, this oh, is wait, this is fucking, there for you know, your... look. If you've got like beautiful young women, uh, uh, you know, available to you, of course you're going to make use of them in that way because they were never gamers there for are you gamers. To look at. 
They were never there for you to be for, to be easy on the eyes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but mean, they were is, easy uh, on my eyes. <laughs> the the eyes whole thing is so food. strange. Like even like something like Collider. I watched Collider a lot, you know, years and years ago. And I think in a lot of ways, a lot of us have kind of replaced that. And that's just a corporate entity, you know, that had their big studio and their fancy lights and their big connections and their studio premieres and their, you know, interviews with celebrities. And it's dead now, you know, you, uh, Collider, you, you, Collider's you, irrelevant. You can tell fakery a mile off. You can tell yep. when it's just some fucking dickhead like reading off a teleprompter and trying to yep. get all like happy clappy and enthusiastic about something like it, it it doesn't work anymore because like you were saying like we brought up you know the world of YouTube has opened people's eyes to like well these are these are what real fans who are really passionate about a subject are like yeah they're not as polished they're not as um, well produced they don't have the budget behind them but they're speaking from the heart and they actually like give good insights into the, the things that they're talking about. Um, that's how it works now. That's what, that's what succeeds. Um, and we just, we almost just don't need anything like that. Now we don't need produced shows like G4 or Collider or any of these shitty like rag video game um, websites like Kotaku or Polygon, because everyone knows exactly what they are now. They're just they're right. they're people that deal in, um, well, in hate clicks basically. Like that, that's their own way. Of they're fucking everywhere. Well, late like, night TV. I mean, late night TV is unwatchable now. It's it's really just yeah. state, it's really just state run television. I mean, SNL is unwatchable. It's you know it's state approved uh, comedy. You know, in quotes. I mean, comedy in effect is dead, except for those that. You know, like you're here and there, Ryan Long or whatnot, that'll do comedy or Chrissy Mayer with where they don't care. Oh no, shoot, Ryan. <laughs> sure. hey, bring him in. Should we see if he wants to come in for a I'll little bit? I guarantee you he would want to hop in. So. Did, now, <laughs> did, 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 did Ryan I mean, analyze? Ryan, did you analyze you missed, how you many you good black it. people and white people were in the Kenobi trailer? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jeremy, you, you, you probably got a, yeah. a you know, yeah, connection yeah, to him. Yeah, um, yeah. could you forward him the link and just yeah, see if he wants to come in? 100%. All right, cool, man. You just said he's at the gym. Oh, <laughs> all right, what a loser. loser! Yeah, what the fuck are you doing, are you Ryan? Working out, you know what exercising. he's doing? I know you know what he's doing. He's counting how many black people are at the gym right now. Yep. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'll send him the link. We'll see if he because it won't take him long. All right. So. All right. There we go. We do need to talk about the Batman though. So that's good yeah, yeah. Let's right? let's let's discuss. Um, I've seen yeah, because I know we, we. Oh, okay. So like, having seen it the second time, has your opinion changed? Uh, not sub, not like a, a lot. Uh, it kind of just confirmed a lot of my concerns. Uh, I liked it slightly less. I think I'd like it a six, six and a half out of 10 on the movie. Um, there's a lot I like about it and there's a lot I don't like about it, but the things that, you know, I said in my initial, you know, reaction to it was my biggest issue in the movie is Batman. And it's not that I disliked Robert Pattinson because I actually thought Robert Pattinson was pretty good in the role, but it's the, the way Batman is treated in the movie. I don't feel like Batman is special in the way he's viewed. I don't like seeing him work alongside Gotham's finest. Like, I don't, mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't like how, like I said, and I, and I don't mean it to come as harsh as it does, but it felt like, it felt like, uh, a, a seven with someone cosplaying as Batman is, is kind of what it felt like because when Batman's walking into these scenarios, the cops treat him like he's Gordon's uh, annoying nephew. You know, like why is he here? That's not how you treat Batman. You should See, be. That's either... how it's. That's how it's been in, in a lot of the comics. Yeah, but like, but I, I, they opened the, the movie's movie. got problems, but I feel like this the movie was probably opens one of the most him. accurate presentations of him what, compared what to like, you know, what we've gotten. The movie opens with this terrifying vision of the bat symbol. Criminals fear him. The score 
which is fantastic, by the way, is meant to make you fear. It's meant to make people fear him. So it's not just the cops, but it's even when he goes to the to the, uh, you know, to, to like when they open the door, the two bouncers and they just like it's Batman and they don't care. And it's like I need, I, I want to see more fear for Batman and they just kind of always dismiss him at times, but then other times he's massively feared. And I feel like there's a lack of consistency throughout. So <clears throat> I like Robert Pattinson in the role, but I don't like how Batman feels when he's out interacting with other people, if that makes sense. No, mm -hmm. I get where you're coming from. Yeah. Like, the way I interpreted it, the, the way the other police officers treat him, right? Obviously the criminals fear him because, um, you know, he's the, the bat symbols out there. Although weirdly, the, the guys on the subway that he fights initially, like they they yeah, don't yeah. back down from him. They actually try and take him on, and he beats the shit Except out of them. So the he's one... not that terrifying for them. Yeah. But the the, the the police, I I kind of got that air that they were quite wary of him. They they were like, I don't want to fuck with this guy, but I also don't like him because he's just a vigilante. And he's ultimately like breaking the law. Like, why are we tolerating this guy being here? That was so. What it I was didn't a weird. Like, actually, they what's that? To, sorry? I don't like the fact that it was very clear they consider him not only a problem in general that he's violated just standard vigilante laws, but also that there are times at which he's implied to be like it could be that he's a suspect and stuff. They never do anything about that. And uh, the film lost me when he punched Gordon and escaped under gunfire. And then, like, how many scenes later is he just chilling with the, the cops again? Yeah, yeah. And that's, like, yeah, that, nah. I, I never yeah. understood as well. Not, like, you, you know, when consistent. that when when the bomb blows up in his face and somehow like he miraculously survives and he's not even like slightly injured, <laughs> well, but it knocks him unconscious into the blade. yeah. So they, they 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 like take him away into like a, a police lockup. Yeah. Um, but nobody thinks to take his mask off. Like that's the perfect time to unmask him and find out who this guy really is. But like, no, they just don't touch him. They just, that seems well, that would really ruin the weird. Plot. Uh, plot yeah, it would ruin the plot. Yeah, yeah. I, I will lot... say though. Oh, go ahead, Flash. I just say, there's a, there's a lot of problems with the movie, but overall, I liked a lot of the stuff that like I'm I'm looking forward to the future of the franchise. I think is what gives me a lot of hope for it. Like if you get what I'm saying. Because I really like the detective stuff. Like this is the first time we've actually gotten that in a Batman movie. Even though you know, at the end of the movie, it's kind of dumb. Yeah, they have him uh, yeah. acting like a big detective for the whole like seventy five percent of the movie, and then he's just all of a sudden just doesn't figure things out. But I think if you get a better editor on that movie and shave time off of the next one, and uh, that you know have him do it a lot of the stuff he did in this movie, I think that this can be a really great that franchise. I, I, I think issue. there's, oh, quite. Yeah, I think there's potential there, and like, if I was to pick a direction that I would like the Batman, you know, character to go in, this is it. Like dark, gritty, like yeah. grounded, um, you know, basically being a detective fighting like actual human criminals. Like that's all fine. It's done good. I, I like the aesthetics of the movie. Um, there was definitely issues with the plot, just with contrivances and and like really. Um, weird things like like you say like him working alongside the gotham pd that just all felt weird um so yeah the, there's potential there this is a the a bit of an awkward first step in the right direction i guess i would i would define this film as yeah i mean there's uh there's a lot to like about the movie um i really like the gotham um I, I don't like it more than Batman 89's Gotham or Tim Burton's Gotham, but I, I do think it has yeah. more of a personality than Nolan's. Uh, if there's any flaws and major flaws in Nolan's trilogy outside of us, like Dark Knight Rises, a lot of flaws in that one. But I'm just saying the overall trilogy, it's it's his Gotham. His Gotham is not cool. consistent and it doesn't have the personality, whereas Matt Reed's yeah. Gotham has a personality. It is yeah, a yeah. character in a lot of what ways. What do you think of um, Gotham and Begins? Uh, I did like Gotham and Begins a lot. I loved it. But the problem is, is it just, and I understand like they were trying to show that Batman and the city was kind of taking a new direction in, in Dark Knight, yeah. but it just felt so drastically different. And then of oh, course, like different cities, like, uh, right. Yeah. And then Rises yeah. was a different city. It just, there's no consistency with Gotham in Nolan's trilogy, which bothered me. But another thing I noticed about the, the Batman with Reeves on the second rewatch so much editing 
is is a disaster in this movie because Awful. it takes things ha so much time to develop and yeah. things just drag out. It's fucking annoying on that second viewing because the first time again you watch anytime you watch a movie and I always say this first time you watch a movie you're watching it for what you're hoping it to be the second time you're watching it you're watching it for what it's supposed to be um when there's high expectations involved that second time i'm watching it i'm going my god everything moves so slow yeah. everything takes so much time to just develop and there's just so many quick cuts that could speed this movie up and make it flow so much better and it drove me crazy on the second watch it drove me I, I have mentioned this on friday night tights i think like even just simple things like whenever he finds another envelope from the uh from the riddler like it it takes him just so long to reach out and and grab it and, and open it up it's just all <laughs> little tiny things like that everything takes way longer than it needs to there's like these big long shots of him slowly walking into a room to examine a crime scene yeah, like it, it, all of these things could be tightened up and just um, made to happen a lot quicker. Well, the original script was 260 pages. It feels like it, it felt like to me the movie, and I actually liked it a little bit better on second viewing. Although I would say that the first half of the movie for me was a 10 out of 10, and the second half was a five out of 10. I feel like they really blew that ending, but it felt like, like, uh, uh, the season of Batman, it was like the season finale. And I did not like the way things played out in the third act. I will say this. There were also three different ending shots. So I don't know how much of that. I can believe that. Will come yeah, completely. Out. Yeah. I, I honestly, if they'd ended that, it with the Was that the, the better of the three? <laughs> if they'd ended it with the Falcone arc, that would have been a, a pretty satisfying ending for the film. The way it yeah, ended I mean, with the spectacle was. Yeah, they wanted a spectacle. The movie that it began, it began like it should have ended with. I mean, look, the movie seven and ended with uh, a standoff and the the famous line, "What's in the box? What's in the box?" That's it. It not big explosions, not big like you know the 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 sea walls of bro not some big spectacle that felt like <laughs> such a studio note. <laughs> oh, it's got to be big. It's got to be big. It's like you know that you know science fiction movie where something blows up at the end. Something always blows up at the end, and then when you do something different like say an empire strikes back we're talking about it decades later right and i feel like this movie had an opportunity to have a more it set it up like 7 have it be more like 7 and you're right drinker it like you could tighten so much in that film but i feel like part of it was setting up the tone this is going to be this is this is a batman movie you're going to savor and it's a lot like the character from the comic with more detective work so so on that aspect i, I really enjoyed it what about what did you guys think about the Batmobile? Because I really liked it, and I liked that. I thought that car chase scene was fantastic. I, I think from the front it looks like a piece of shit, but then you see from the back with the that jet engine, and I'm engine. like, yeah, I'm fucking all in on this one. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, I wanted to like the car chase. But I couldn't help but think about all the people screaming in the background as he did his little pose for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, man, this is a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, I, I you can't help but compare new Batman films to previous Batman iterations. So mm. for me, the the definitive Batmobile is Tim Burton's Batmobile. Yeah, that'd um, always be the best. And then I prefer the Tumblr next. I and hate then, the Tumblr. Yeah, and then I'll take uh, I'll take Pattinson's. But I liked it. I, I did like the new Batmobile, and I think it worked. And and they I think they all need to be different in their own way um, to to have some personality. But the chase scene was good. Uh, I did. The, to me, the, the two standout things in this film are Gotham and Michael Giacchino's score. That score, oh, yeah, score is yeah, so right. fucking yeah. good, dude. It's so good. It's, it's so weird. good. You know what's funny about this movie as well? It actually shows Batman on his bike more often than he's in the Batmobile. Oh, true. I like that. I like that bike yeah. too. I like the bike in uh, Nolan's movies too. I liked it when he yeah. got rid of that tumbler and was on the motorcycle. Yeah, that was awesome. That was yeah. an awesome. I, I, I think, um, yeah. The, this was essentially just a car with a jet engine strapped to the back. Um, See, I, I like that because I I love muscle cars. So for me, that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, I know it was fair enough. <clears throat> it's funny because I think about the the Batmobile from like the 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 Ben Affleck era, and it's weird because it. It almost suggests that it's an awesome vehicle, but you never see it. It's it's always just really quick cuts of it. It never gets that that long lingering shot of like the the exterior, so you can get a real idea of its shape and stuff. It's always just in action. 
Um, yeah. And it was it was a strange way of doing it because I feel like I never really saw it in its entirety. I mean, the only thing, um, you know, if you're just looking at the overall, like in terms of the movie itself, the Batman, like I do think there's reasons to be maybe uh, optimistic moving forward with what they're going to do. But my biggest problem with this movie, if I'm pointing to a singular problem and I understand, so I'm not criticizing the decision as much as I think that the decision doesn't isn't a problem it's the lack of context it gives is the lack of bruce wayne like yeah needing bruce wayne if you look at like batman begins and you hear you know when he you know you know coming back to gotham you hear him talking about what his vision is and what his intentions are and what he wants to do it gives you a little bit of insight into the man bruce wayne then you see the public persona then you <clears> see the bat suit <throat> and all of these things are there to connect you to this person whereas i don't know who Bruce Wayne is in this movie. I have no idea. I know he's broken and I, and I respect that he's broken. I appreciate that he's a broken man and he really just is Batman in a lot of ways, but without understanding more about him, it's hard to connect to the overall story for me. I love the movie. The pro no, I think you're right. The idea that there isn't really much of a Bruce left that is pretty much just Batman. Alfred, I mm -hmm. think even regrets that that's the reality of the situation because of his lack of a father. Right. Um, or I suppose a, parent a better parent but um i think we're gonna get that in the next one it seems there's, a, there's an implication by the end of the movie that he needs to do more than just strike vengeance and fear into people that he's gonna have to do some efforts and maybe that reflects on his bruce wayne persona more philan philanthropy as they would say well, i think the mayor was hitting at that already it's like yeah. you know you you're a billionaire but you don't do anything for charity or whatever and i'm here to change that and I gotta be honest, like if someone came up to me like that, I'd be like, no, fuck off. You're not taking my money. <laughs> Get I give your money away. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm you not know, gonna decide what I do with my cash. Uh, but no, like um, no, you're you're exactly right. I, I think we've we've kind of understood that this version of Bruce Wayne is very much skewed towards Batman. And he's almost um it's like he's immature and so he's obsessive about just being the crime fighting batman but he's just he's wasting his time on low level thugs for the most part and missing the bigger picture at the start of the movie you know he's beating up guys in a subway because they're attacking like a random civilian that's probably not a great use of his time in the bigger picture but that's that's all we can see because he's just blindly like going after this goal um totally neglecting his his idea of being bruce wayne like Bruce Wayne's just like forgotten about for him. Um, whereas in Batman Begins, um, Christian Bale's version, he very much had a plan right off the right off the bat. He's, you know, I, I have to be a symbol for people. I have to keep my identity a secret. This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to, you know, balance those two things in my life. Um, it was a, an older, smarter man who was more mature and had a time to think about this stuff. Uh, and that's not what you're seeing here. So yeah, it does take some getting used to because you just don't expect that from from Bruce Wayne after he's two years into this. Yeah, I mean, I went in this movie really thinking I was going to love it. I mean, I really was uh, from the first trailer because um, I, I I like a lot of people, you know, like uh, Robert Pattinson, really. But so when that announcement happened, I was I, I didn't know what to think. But then I saw the first trailer and I've been hooked ever since the first trailer. And I like Matt Reeves. I like a lot of what he's doing. So I did go into this movie with really high expectations and kind of walked out of it very confused because I wasn't sure because there was a lot of liked and a lot of didn't. But that second viewing, it, it basically confirmed everything I felt. Just kind of I leaned a little less to where I was at on it. I, I downed it a bit for me, but not not that bad. I still can say I enjoyed it. There was just a lot that I had issues with too. But moving forward, I think they got some stuff to work with here. Well, I think even even all the positive reviews talked about the length of the film. I mean, it's it it just seems so easy to cut thirty minutes out of it and almost lose nothing. Really. Yeah, yeah. I, I said this in my review. It's like if if this was two and a half hours, you would have a much tighter, better structured movie, and it'd probably make more money because it really you do have to consider that right a three hour movie plus if you go to the theater, you're getting fifteen minutes of trailers. It's like yeah. That's you know, you're sitting there much longer, really, than three hours. And it's true if you're getting drinks and stuff, it it just at, by the end of that movie, I was ready to go. 
I was ready to get out of there and hit the bathroom immediately. I feel like that two and a half hour time is is it's where movies spot. need to be. Yeah. Yeah. Forget that. And, and that movie could have done that. It yeah. could have been two and a half hours. I really yep. do. I agree. You could have cut. You could have found a way to chop off 30 minutes of that movie. I, I, I feel like I wish we'd get back to that day where movies were two hours, right? If it's a drama, it's two hours. If it's a comedy, it's 90 minutes, right? Like, like I mean, Lucas kind of set that precedent with, you know, you look at like whether it's Jaws, uh, the Star Wars original trilogy, although it got long with Jedi, uh, the, you know, Indiana Jones films, they're all two hours. Where did I, I think the reason we've gotten to this place where movies are creeping longer because they're not better. It's different. It's not okay. Lord of the Rings is an exception. If it's an epic, yeah, you can go three hours if it's an epic, if it's earned. I think they should bring even bring back like the intermission. Um, oh, yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah. The last movie that had a formal intermission that was released was Gandhi in 1982. <clears throat> was it? No, early 80s. Anyways, that's the last one I remember actually having an intermission, unless it's some retrospective screening of like Lawrence of Arabia. But but yeah, the, look, if it's going to be over two hours, it's got to be earned. The problem is this. I think what you've got is too much noting from studios and too many people kind of arguing for like, well, we've got to have this scene or that or, you know, um, back with Tim Burton um, and, you know, the Batman films he made. I mean, McDonald's actually apologized because Batman Returns was so dark and not so much for kids. I mean, I don't know if they've seen this new movie, but, you know, um, you know, you, there are toy deals, merchandise deals. There's just so much. There are television tie-ins now. Like, it, it just, it, I just feel that there's so much put on the modern filmmaker to placate so many, so many other interests that it compromises the movie. I mean, not to mention all the bullshit grifting from things like COVID compliance or you know, uh, intimacy officers. These are all new real jobs on film sets that contribute nothing to good filmmaking, right? But I guess keep the HR department and legal happy. So I, I don't know. I, I can't imagine make what it's like make a movie for a major studio now. It's got to be fucking miserable. So. I'd be interested in the toy sales for this too because the toys are on the shelf and I don't see this being a kid-friendly movie even though it did do massive numbers opening weekend. I mean, it did insane numbers. I really so. wonder how in general toy sales are because I feel like have you I, every time I go into a toy aisle it feels like it's geared towards like 30-year-old men. <laughs> yep. No, it is. Like, it, it, yeah. well, it is. I mean, like, I mean, I collect all the GI Joes that are releasing, and they're very hard to find still. Um, I went into Walmart up. the other day, and they had the retro Ninja Turtle action figures and Ghostbusters action figures, and I'm like, I'm thinking, who is this for? Like, you is this a toy owl for me now? <laughs> Pretty <You know? laughs> much. So, like, the Star Wars toys are <laughs> they're not Ray Skywalker. Okay. It, it ain't Ray. It's it's full of Luke Skywalker, the guy that they tell us that we can't like, apparently. And, um, you know, all, all of the original trilogy people. So it, it's a weird dynamic. But, yeah, the I've seen a lot of the Batman toys on the shelves, and they're not moving. So, yeah. I don't know. Maybe those Fortnite. They'll put a Fortnite skin in there. That'll... <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I know that, uh, Chris, I, I'm pretty sure you've you've – kind of run out of time this evening yeah um but, yeah but, um, but, I, but i'll be back i'll be back just like yeah. darth vader is going to be back in the disney plus series <laughs> obi-wan kenobi he's been paid everyone no <laughs> <laughs> oh i knew it i just i feel like I, that one I'm interested in watching. Boba Fett, I just never understood. And I watched the first 15 minutes of that first episode of Boba Fett. And I, and I thought a fan film would have been, but this is, this is a fan film, how he escaped the Sarlacc pit. He just sort of, he just sort of crawls his way out. Like, what was that? Oh yeah. Stupid. I um, so I, I don't know. That's why my faith in what this Disney plus series will be is just really I just don't have a lot of faith in it just because of what's come before. It's I feel like the people running these franchises now, they don't think like a fan. You know, they're not and it, it needs more George Lucas, which is sad. So anyways, hey gentlemen, thank you so much uh for having me on uh Drinker Mauler. Uh, 
Jeremy. Absolutely. Gosh, thank you. And thanks to the chat. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be back. No, oh, thank you, man. Right. That's, 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 it's weird. That's like a threat. <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back. We're gonna play <laughs> some video games soon, Chris. I'll get exactly. Hundred percent. All right. Take care. Later. Bye. Hi, All right. Bye. Thanks, man. Bye. Um. Yeah, it's uh, what kind of world I, I, do we live in when we still get to hang out with Chris Gore. What the fuck's going on? It's so weird to me. So it's great. It's great <laughs> to be able to have him on, man. It's awesome, man. <laughs> um, yeah, I know we've uh, we've got a few super chats that have obviously come in while we've been doing this. Would you guys have a little bit of time? We can maybe try Absolutely. and tackle a few of them. Do yeah, it. I got I'm, I got about twenty minutes left. So I mean, as long okay. as you, you know, so. We gotta get through all of the super chats in twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Right. There you go. So <laughs> we can do this. Yeah. So keep sending them so drinker has to read faster. Uh, yeah, so just, <laughs> none of us can respond to any of them. I'm just gonna read them and then move straight on to the next one. <laughs> uh, just give me one second here while I bring them up. Uh, okay. Come on, Matt Reeves. You gotta make that transition quicker. Come on. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we go. So, Chuxenhausen, he said, uh, Hey, Law, I've asked this before, but I say a happy hour of Karate Kid with Jeremy and Tom uh, from Midnight's Edge would be legendary. Discount Stingray out. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, we talked about um, yeah, we talked about Cobra Kai a little bit on a happy oh, hour. I love so, I love one Kai. day, yeah, we should do, we should do the, the Karate Kid that started it all. Um, he also said, One more thing. When you review Reacher... Bring in Wes Kelly from the Drinker Facebook group. He loves the show and is full of legendary toxic masculinity. Perfect. Um, yeah, like I say, I've, I've been enjoying Reacher so far. I think um, it's a good antidote to like modern movie making. Uh, you've actually got like a, a fucking badass male lead. Uh, who knew that it could still happen? It was I mentioned on uh, Real BBC. I don't know if it's true, um, but is it the most popular show that Amazon have? Because that would be I awesome think it is. Us. Yeah, that would be awesome if that's the case and then points right to it. You put out good stuff, man. And it's like Chris Gore several times made the point about it, that, that fans aren't working on a lot of these things. And then you talk about Cobra Kai. What, what worked on that? Fans of the Karate Kid. That That's who made that series. And even if it has flaws and it does. It, it's still really good and it honors the source material. And so with Reacher. I got to see it. A lot of people have been hyping it up. So. I've only seen the first episode and and I did like it, but then Elden Ring came out. And... <laughs> 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 That's pretty much taking up all my time. But uh, Cobra Kai is such a great show. Spot on. Such a great show. And it has so many good values in it that you just don't see anymore. Like redemption with like the fa like people being good fathers, even like, you know, a good father redeeming himself, him and his son coming back together at the end of that last season. Yeah. I thought was was really nice, and you just don't see shit like that anymore, especially just men being good dads. Like I really appreciate that in that show. Mm -hmm. You know what? What's men, interesting men are about shit in Hollywood nowadays. They they really are, yeah. But you know what's interesting as well about it? Um, I always felt like with Johnny, um, how his idea of starting up Cobra Kai was like, yeah, you're all pussies nowadays, and you need to learn some badass, like not taking shit from people, um, <laughs> kind of mentality. I, I think they originally wrote that to be almost like a joke, like everyone's going to laugh at him for like, oh, isn't this guy outdated, you know, with this crazy like 80s mentality. Um, and then everyone just fucking loved it. Like they absolutely lapped it up. It's like, yes, this is what we've been missing for the past yeah. like 10 years in, in cinema. Um, and it became like this unlikely hero. I don't know, man. Um, it just it really feels like it tapped into something. I've talked I've talked about it. I think I've talked about it with you when I came on, you know, a while back I talked about it. But when that series was first announced and people were telling me to watch it, I just was completely like, Are you kidding me? Why would I watch a YouTube red series with a bunch of yeah. actors I didn't even know were still alive? Why would I watch this? Watched it, fell in love with it. So yeah. there you go. They they did a great job with that one. Um Joseph Snowart, he said, uh, with the fact that Arcane was made by a gaming company using their own staff to uh, to write it and produced by a French animation studio does sorry that does their own cinematics, do you think the future of films are outside of Hollywood? Maybe. I mean, I think so. I mean, it, gaming, there's a lot of games out there that tell a far better story than a lot of the movies, and we all know how anime, how well anime is doing. Oh, so. yeah. 
Well, we've um, covered a lot of South Korean stuff as well. You know, Squid Game was massively successful. You know, you had movies like Train to Busan, great like zombie stuff. Um, you know, I, I just recently reviewed um, All of Us Are Dead, another South Korean. Um, is like, that any good? I, I, I saw it, or I, I saw it being advertised. Is it good? Yeah, it's really fucking good, man. Okay. Honestly, like the, within the, the the very first episode, it will have you. Um, great action scenes like they really put a lot of work into the, like the fight choreography and stuff and yeah like the characters are great like they're really likable um you know you, you're better watching the dub version sorry the the subtitled version rather than dub because it's pretty shitty dubbing always but, always yeah. watch the subtitle as a big anime fan i always go subs over over dub yeah well, i mean but i think, I I think you'd really enjoy it man the audience has been fairly nice to me today, so I guess it's time for me to say that I watch a lot of dub anime. About to, I'm about to get canceled. Worse than Ryan. <laughs> I said, run, I run, a, Jeremy. Normally, Woo! I wouldn't request Over. someone be removed from the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> now, there are watch exceptions the to this. The chat's about to just go uh, off. I agree me. with Ron Gold in the chat says, not for Cowboy Bebop. I agree with that. There's always exceptions. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist is much better dubbed than uh, subbed, in my opinion. Sick. But Cancel on Jeremy. the average, the subtitled versions are always better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there it is. <laughs> well, you, like you were talking about, you saying all of this, uh, like uh, Squid Games and and stuff. That like they, in the East, they don't have the same restrictions they have. They can tell whatever story they want. Yeah, now, yeah, here, they don't give a to, shit like, about being woke. So like Chris was talking about you have to run an inclusivity software on your script out. They don't do that in Japan or or Korea. They don't do that there. They can tell whatever they want. They want to tell a story, they can tell it. And over here, you can't do that. If you have something over here that doesn't fit the narrative just quite so perfectly, it gets canceled. A really good example of this is this anime called Rising of the Shield Hero. And the character is this, uh, he's like a specialized character. It's like a medieval type setting, but he, uh, he gets accused of sexually assaulting and raping the princess, uh, of the, of the land. And he gets thrown out and has to clear his name and she's lying. And like, you could never, you could never tell that story here ever. You imagine if they made a movie like that, where, someone that gets accused of wrongfully raping someone and uh was innocent if they put that out here that wouldn't that was a story that would get canceled you'd have a million articles on it mm -hmm. and it would get pulled from theaters mm -hmm. you're right you're right it is i mean like i watch something like death note you know just incredible storytelling with literally no nothing no agendas I watched attack on titan it, 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 like it's that's the entertainment that people want. We don't you could never tell Attack on Titan here. No, 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 especially no. if you know what's coming. Yes, so there you go. Nice. Um, what's the next one here? So, James Kelly, he said, uh, thanks for the stream yesterday, man. That was good fun. Um, so that was like a, a stream for like patrons and, and subscribe star and stuff, um, which was good. It was great to talk to people. Um, Hey drinker um, or panel, in fact, anyone got a good, a good funny story? Re regale the chat with your funny anecdotes, gentlemen. <laughs> like uh, in general? Yeah, just anything in life. Because uh, oh, I need, wow. I need to go for a piss, so I'm going to leave you, you guys, to handle this one for a minute or so. <laughs> <laughs> so, so just a funny story in general. Uh, wow, I don't know if I can think of something off the top. Somebody of my in the head. chat says oh, the last duel. In the last duel, the woman. Uh, she was right. It's believe all women is that movie. Last duel, believe all women. That should be the, that should be part of the title. And which one is that one? That's that. That's the that one you were talking with about. Ben Affleck and oh uh, Matt Damon, and the, what's his name? Adam Driver's in it. It's the, actually the, not that bad of a movie. I haven't but seen the that whole one. marketing for the movie is believe all women. They really yeah. screwed that movie up with the marketing. I mean that doesn't surprise me at all. So, um, well, so uh, if you're looking for a funny story, so I have a friend who uh, went to see the Batman, and then he gave his review, and in his review he said that he can't, he thought there was too many good black people and not enough good white people, and the <laughs> internet actually freaked out about it and uh, tried to cancel him. 
<laughs> you did that clip got a million views. It got one point. Last time I looked, it has one point two million views on Twitter, and <laughs> relatively no real heat though. Like that's the thing we were talking about. There's been no heat whatsoever from like outside of the Twitter world, but it's been it's, everywhere. It's crazy. Philip DeFranco click played it the other day on his show. He did. Yes. <laughs> not the win. It's not news. It's just. <laughs> it's so weird like like the turnover of events on twitter it's just like it'll it's just boom, 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 boom like like the next it yeah. could be huge engagement but everyone forgets about it in a second yeah what uh no. how many subs did he get off of that i think he gained about two thousand between both channels yeah, i so. need i need to make a video talking about complaining Ta- about black people. That racist yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. gonna say, like when you talked about gaining subs from twitter controversy i was like i've got to be fucking right <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, you wanted a funny story. I said I have a friend who went and saw the, bat- saw the Batman, did a review, and then he talked about how many good black people were in it versus good white people, and he made a lot of people mad. So that, <laughs> <laughs> that, I could, that got like a million views on Twitter, didn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah, I've never point seen two. anything like that before. Mm-mm. Damn. I, yeah. I used to think the days of Mahler getting canceled over Jenny Nicholson uh, that happens every two Still months. Happens, it seems yeah. like that pops up. Yeah. <laughs> She was always trying to cancel me for having long videos yesterday. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Come on, you got to try harder than that. <laughs> yeah, but no, uh, Philip DeFranco put it in his video the other day, Drinker. Ryan's clip. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, what the hell is going on? Dude's becoming famous. It's great. But I did tell um, Ryan, to, like, we're in Orlando, and I was like, to be fair, Ryan, you kind of do it like a racist like you kind of do <laughs> like just your mannerisms you're always angry like i get it i can understand why people thought that when they saw the clip so <laughs> he's gonna start like just shaving his beard into a little tiny mustache in the middle yeah. there <laughs> slicking his hair over <laughs> <laughs> it was only a matter of time. He yeah. should do he should do that for a video and just say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's my new look. Uh, me, what's this, the problem? The swashbuckling scallywaggy said, Lads, are any of you into the last kingdom? The final season just dropped, and for me, it's the best complete series in the longest time. It's a masculine show with plenty of strong female characters and no woke garbage. I haven't, I haven't seen, seen it. it. I haven't seen it. Yeah, um, I, I know I started watching it. I got like a few episodes in, just um, didn't quite grab me. But then I think it's one of those shows that really found its feet like after like the first season and just really got going after that. I just didn't give it the time it needed, you know? Um, one show I started watching recently, and I've talked about it, uh, I binged through it, but it was Yellowstone. I love Yellowstone. So yeah, I hear that's great. Um, and the views the la- for it. The last season was not great like there was a lot of and again it didn't like it's not a deal breaker or anything but the last season there's just a lot of questionable writing and character motivations in the in the last the most recent season but especially those first couple of seasons is so fucking good uh the the scope the scale and having kevin costner you know the lead you know of it but yeah it's a it's a really really good show really good uh nice one Next one was uh, RRTNZ. He said, Hail Drinker and Guest, thanks for a great Patreon stream last night. Hope you all uh, celebrate Chuck's birthday. It used to be a street named Chuck Norris. I had to change the name because no one crosses Chuck Norris and lives. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Fair love it. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck Norris doesn't sleep. He waits. Uh, yeah, <laughs> very true. Apparently underneath his beard, there's a fist waiting to punch you. Um, but yeah, the, what was the next one? So, Mikey Gussler, he said, so the new Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer dropped and people are loving it. You think they remember that the people making this show are the ones that said the prequels sucked? Oh, well, can't wait for Angry Joe to give it a 10 out of 10. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm sure yep. there's no, I'm sure there's no bribery mean? involved. You do feel sometimes that, like, oh, we're making a difference, right? And then it's just like, man, look at the people who just adore it. It's like they, they just, they just love it. It's like not a dead line and not a single yeah. Dead. yeah. I mean, I, I did think, I think that's where my disconnect really started to happen with Star Wars before the Gina Carano stuff. But it was like, once the Rise of Skywalker happened, I think that that everything was confirmed, you know, like there was no plan. These people have no idea what they're doing. The Last Jedi was not good. 
But even still, going back to The Force Awakens, there was no plan. And then that all led us to the to the rise of Skywalker, which was an objectively terrible film. And I think it's even worse than The Last Jedi, um, whether that just be objectively or what it means to Star Wars. It's awful. But it lost 50 percent of the audience. And so at that point, I'm like, OK, finally, now we have tangible evidence what we've been telling you that this is happening. And it changed nothing. <laughs> they just continued <laughs> to just do it. And we're like, oh, my well, God. Mando season one, people felt was like a change. And then two, uh, uh, this is murky depths. And then and then Boba Fett. And it's like, oh, God, nothing's changed. Man- Mando, season it, it was... one, Mando season I... one was people that were hungry for a cracker and got some little bit of stuff. They were really hungry and they got a little cracker and it tasted okay. So it's great. Yeah. That's that's I mean, the I, thing. Like when yeah. it, when you raise the bar, well, sorry, when you lower the bar to such a point where you can fucking roll over it, that's that's all that Mando yeah. did. Like it's like barely passable entertainment, but it's hailed as this fucking like savior of Star Wars. It's like no it wasn't. It was just generic like simplistic as fuck storytelling that looked kind of nice and it wasn't a complete disaster like the movie so everyone fucking loved it like that's how desperate people are for decent star wars entertainment yeah i mean there was parts of mandalorian that i i enjoyed significantly there's other parts uh hell I, i'll never forget yeah. i was talking about it mauler i what, what episode was that that i enjoyed and then you and rags like one hey, up the, the jump on a, one yeah, hey buddy can you jump on a jump on a discord call we need to talk to you and i was like sure and like, hey what's up hey we, there, there was some other stuff we were talking about and then we just started talking about man i was like yeah i really liked it man 10 minutes later I was like, fuck you guys. I hate it now. I don't guys. hate that show, but man, it's not a it's not an amazing show. It's it's passable entertainment that no, but if you look at, like if you take the Star Wars element out of that, just take the Star Wars element out of that, and you look at like really high quality shows that we've seen, Breaking Bad, Sons of Anarchy, you know, these are shows that are really good, you know, Game of Thrones early on, early on. Preface it by saying that. <laughs> Early the you fuck at, on, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Early the fuck yeah. on. But and if you look at the Mandalorian, you take the Star Wars element out of it, and it's just there's it's not overly entertaining, and the pacing is not overly good. But you add the Star Wars element to it, and that's your salt and pepper. You know what I mean? That they, they added that salt and pepper, and it tasted really good for a while. But uh, yeah, it's just um, Disney Star Wars is long gone for me. Yep, uh, I very much agree. The next one was um, James Kelly said that uh, Chuck Norris is currently involved in a lawsuit with NBC claiming law and order infringes on the copyright for his left and right legs. (laughs) (laughs) Beautiful. (laughs) Dispensing law and order. Uh, Unhinged says, with this panel, the moisture in my pants is on like the tropical rainforest. (laughs) Oh, my. Well, we, we aim to please. Um, Richard Curtis said, uh, thank you. uh, Sorry. I think you and Chris were talking about Queen's Gambit once when Chris mentioned Mockingbird by Walter Tevis. I would like to thank him for this. Recently read it and loved it. Also pre-ordered Dark Harvest today. Oh shit, is that is that for pre-order already? Um, damn, I need to look that up. Uh, yeah, that Dark Harvest is my my new book that's upcoming and it's going to get published in August, but uh, I didn't think it was even available yet, so damn, you're ahead of me. And I fucking wrote the thing, so I should probably know. Um, XSL said um, how to get past the initial hump before making vids. Um, what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not 100% clear on what the initial hump they're referring to. Do they just mean like because they're a bit intimidated by the process or? I, I guess maybe, yeah. Like maybe finding that motivation or like that inspiration to start making videos. If that's what it's in reference to, I mean, I- I'll say this. There's nobody that doesn't deal with roadblocks, no matter what. Like I still deal with it to the to you know, no matter what. Look how many channels I have, and people probably look at like I'm always thinking like, oh man, should, I don't do I you know what what do I make a video on? Am I interested in this or can I be entertaining? We all have obstacles, no matter what, and so it may seem like a you know that we don't from certain perspectives. I promise you we all do in our own respective ways, except for drinker. He can just shit out whatever and get a million views. But that's, you know, but, <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, but we all do. We all do. We all just like, cause we're all just normal people. But if you're trying to start a channel, 
just do it. Just turn the camera make, on and do it. And make and, your first video. My channel is under attack. <laughs> yeah, and put yeah, Jeremy go, from yeah. the quartering in it with a sad, <laughs> sad face. Uh, yeah, and, maybe and, put and, Brie Larson looking angry or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, staring so, at you. Uh, put yourself out there. You're only going to get better. Um, because I, I look back on some of my earlier videos and I'm like, good Lord. And then I look back on videos that I made yesterday and I'm like, good Lord. So it really didn't get any better, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but no, just put yourself out there. Take that first step. That's the hardest one. Your last no, video much. you did was pretty good. You put a lot of editing production in it. I was wondering if I was on the right channel. <laughs> I have, I've actually, uh, I have, I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of creatively. I'm just, kind of trying to shift things on a certain element for geeks and gamers for my stuff um but you know we'll see but yeah i have a, we've added some editing uh ivan ortega has been doing some some really good work over there I, I was actually like quite close to putting some footage of you in like a video i was making um but i just didn't have time to get in touch with you and get your permission and stuff but it was basically going to be like um trying to give advice to people who were starting up YouTube channels and saying, look, there's not that many people that can just turn on a webcam and start rolling and be able to like put together a, a, a well-structured kind of coherent argument um, and, and not have like pauses while they try to remember what they're going to do. But I was going to do you as an example of like, well, you can do that really effectively you're you're good at it you've got the ability uh, you, to just you, talk you know i appreciate um, that you you have hey, full you yeah anything, up, you know? yeah anything you anything you want <laughs> look i i have enough hate videos on me made so <laughs> you can I, I, there, if there's a positive video out there yeah anything you need man you can take channels dedicated to you <laughs> yes. yeah. one in particular that i'm not going to name but <laughs> i almost think that he wants to have sex with you <laughs> I mean, our, our, our entire our entire main event was sniped by another channel that's just just ankle biting so much mainly for ripa they're really after ripa right now i know exactly so. who you're talking about mm -hmm. it's been fun it's been fun is that the guy that ripa was just calling him a fat motherfucker no nah, there's another one <laughs> no. there's all another right there's another one beyond that yeah damn um the next one here was uh yeah <laughs> Taker 610 said Scotland finally apologizes for 14th century witch burning laws. <laughs> I, I, I'd say don't apologize at all. They absolutely deserve to get fucking burned. They were witches. You gotta get yeah, rid you of gotta them. keep those witches under control, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like everyone's forgotten how dangerous witches are. God. I know, yeah. It's so funny now that we feel like we have to apologize for it. It's like it happened like 500 years before any of us were fucking born. What are we supposed to do? I know. It's bizarre shit. Like, uh, JS Pena says, hut life or bounty hunter life? I would go for bounty hunter, personally. Bounty hunter. Yeah. yeah. Why would we want to be a... <laughs> Travel, see the galaxy, meet interesting people and kill them. Or oh, sleep on a thing and <laughs> you can own everything, I guess. Um, Snake669 said, uh, after the musical numbers in The Hobbit, do you think they'll have the orcs sing... Where there's a whip, there's a way in the new <laughs> Lord of the Rings. <laughs> we can't uh, hope. <laughs> Marksman of 117B said, in Elden Ring, a woman hugs your uh, face to her chest. I'll, I'll, I will take that. that she also, she that, also takes away happen. some of your uh, abilities when she does that. Yes, yeah, so, she yeah. does. So if, you don't, like you, a, she doesn't hug you for free. It's uh, very accurate it. to real life. It's very accurate to real say, life. <laughs> no Ganathan for nothing. <laughs> uh, Takes your yeah, resources, you get happiness. That's how it works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, because that's how that's uh that's kind of that's why Bruce or that's why Batman lost the Bane in Dark Knight Rises. He hooked up with the uh, what's her name and then got his ass beat. You know, this is how it goes. You take your ability. <laughs> Nolan away. Batman is a so. simp. <laughs> um. Hey, patient Elijah said, "Hey, drinker, what would you do if you found out that Mauler is the master from Doctor Who?" Um, Tricky. <laughs> um, I'd probably challenge him to a drinking contest until he revealed his secret identity, then murder him and hide the Aww. body. <laughs> That'd be the sensible way. <laughs> <laughs> he might well be. Actually, we we just we'll never know for sure. Um, the Sacred Order said, Hail Drinker, please plug my anti-woke sci-fi novel, The Last American by Ed Ronan on Amazon. Well, there you go. Uh, if you want an anti-woke sci-fi novel, then look up The Last American by Ed Ronan on Amazon. You can get it there. 
Um, and Bane Man said, remember when Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing both released on the same day and both companies were doing a lot of friendly crosstalk online with each other and everyone enjoyed it? Yes, yes. It was awesome and it was funny. And what the hell is wrong with those fucking devs for Horizon Zero Dawn? It's, like, it's so easy to just get some wins in here. I know. Like, hey, we do open world too. It would be cool. Yeah. If, hey, hey, what if Elden it was Ring? So is stupid set in the to release Horizon that game. World? So dumb to release that game. So close to Elden Ring. I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> Somebody they said they did this they could... with the but original. They, could... they released it by with uh, next to Spider Man. I don't know if that's true. Uh, but, but they still could play into it. They could still play into it, uh, and just you know, instead of show jealousy, but they're getting they're getting destroyed. So well, it's it's Sony. That's a very, I mean, yeah. Wait, wait, wait! I need I need to stop the conversation right now. Um, <laughs> how the fuck is Nick Cage returning for a Face Off sequel? Like, like, is this real? Is this for yeah, real? I've heard this. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna have I to have. look this up. Face Off Two is hell? coming. Why? I don't know. Um, well, okay. Well, Drinker's looking that up. Um, if you want to, after the stream's over, look up Doom Eternal with the Super Mario Odyssey theme. It's the greatest <laughs> video you will watch all day long. So it's that it's that Super Mario Odyssey theme when it's got the Doom Eternal trailer, and it's freaking awesome. Or Doom Eternal gameplay, and it's perfect. It's oh, so good. Correction. Uh, the original Horizon Dawn was released next to Breath of the Wild. Ah, there we go. Uh, okay, so, yep, it is apparently happening. John Travolta and Nicolas Cage are coming back, despite one of them fucking Dude, dying in the first he's movie. Dead. <laughs> yeah. Dude, John Travolta will love to that opportunity to be like, yeah, 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 let's do it, let's do it. I don't even know what he's up to these days. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think he's gone down the Bruce Willis road of releasing like ten movies a year, and like they're all fucking garbage. No. Nick Cage uh, I, has I, been doing that too, though, so it kind of works out. He does. I know, but well, at least he's invested in what he does. Like, I, I watched that Red Letter Media video where they talked about like terrible Bruce Willis movies yeah. over the past couple of years, like Apex and stuff. And it's, it's like it's not he's real, not man. even fucking there. No, he's, he's I, like I can't remember the name of it, but there's a Nick Cage movie coming out where he plays himself as a washed-up celebrity. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like the unbearable that. weight that of good. genius yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, that looks like a funny movie. It'd be funny if Nick Cage has a comeback from this off that movie. No, cool. the thing. Nobody can cite a movie when Nick Cage just didn't put in any effort at all. But Bruce Willis is at the point where can you cite a movie recently that he put effort in? You're like, uh, it's going to yeah. be a tough one. Uh, no, they, they, they absolutely slayed it. And like, it's so, it's so blatant as well. Like w with his movies, like he's literally just there for like a day. And they just put, they get whatever pickup shots they can get of him, and then just somehow find a way to splice it into the movie, um, and that's all you get from him. Um, and then most of his lines are just ADR'd. And Jesus, like that's that's a hell of a way to make your money at this point in your life. Like, geez, you know, do you really need to be doing this now? Yes. <laughs> Apparently he is. Yeah. Um, Homerostasis says Elden Ring is the game that Skyrim sees when it looks in the mirror. Oh. Um, Ryan Patterson that. said, uh, I see your super chat and I'll raise you a gallon of gas. All this has got me thinking maybe it's time to do a happy hour of Mad Max. <laughs> Thanks, Drinker and Mauler. Yeah, it's it's rough. We're heading Gasoline, there. Gasoline, right? Yeah, that's what I call it. Yeah. Uh, Joe Rias said, every live stream should be renamed Pause from ER. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Elden Ring. I keep getting confused on that because you think they mean ER as in E semicolon R freaking YouTuber. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah. Um, Stephen Bobo said, I have a question for Chris Gore. Oh, you're out of luck. Uh, but it could be answered by anybody on, on the panel. Yay! Uh, what was the better live action video game review show? X Play or Electric Playground? Hmm. I mean, I, really I watch either. So. I, I watched X Play, so I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not too aware of. Uh, the yeah, other I watched one. X Play. I don't know what the I, other one is. I was always watching X Play. So was, was it any good? Oh yeah, yeah. X Play was great back in the day. Uh, let's go with X Play then. There we go. It's all right. Um, Stalker Quita says Russia invades Ukraine. Vader will fight Kenobi. This is the two engagements I never wanted to see. Now there we go. Uh, yeah, very true. Pretty um, much. 
El Berizidente said, Jake Skywalker, may I introduce Josh Kenobi? Uh, I think that's a really good job with you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Uh, Infinite Main said, Hail Drinker and Company, don't you know there's no such thing as bad writing, only toxic fandom? Yeah, that's what we've been told. Um, it's always the fans. Be- yeah, always it's always fans. the fans' fault. Yeah, Just accept the garbage we're shoveling into your faces. Why are you questioning us? Um, Stiebeck B said, Drinker, if you value storytelling in video games, you must play Cyberpunk 2077 on PC. Uh, you'll have extreme emotional ride with all the characters in it. I mean, is, does it work now? It's uh, I played a little bit of it on Xbox Series X, and it was running fine. I think, I think they've actually fixed it up with that big patch that dropped a few weeks ago. It's but just Elden such a Ring shame because out, you, so. you kind, yeah, you kind of need to have it work when it launches. I agree. It's no good to say like it's a buggy, like barely yep. functional piece of shit, and like we'll gradually improve it over time. Yeah, yeah. They've, it, 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 we've seen so many games that, that launch broken and just delay it until it's right because if you miss yep. that launch, it's, it's 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 impossible to make up that ground. I mean, shit, man. Even even Horizon had a bunch of problems with it. Um, I, I streamed some of it to Twitter where it was like uh, my character got locked into a crouching pose and she was just gliding around the map. Yeah, I saw that. Um, <laughs> and I couldn't do anything with her. Uh, didn't you put that on Twitter? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. From the, the PlayStation, um, and yeah, like that's been fixed, I guess, in subsequent patches. But that was absolutely there, um, and it was a real hazard to gameplay because, like, if it happened, you couldn't do anything. You just had to go back to your last save and hope it worked. Um, Anthony Durrell said, "It's my birthday today. Have some electronic fun bucks." Oh, thank you, nice. man, and happy birthday to you, Anthony. Happy birthday. Yeah. J.S. Pena says, correction, Jeremy, I- Jeremy Iden's actress is Indian slash Dutch. Okay. Oh, the Iden Versio. Um, yeah, I don't know what she's portrayed as. I mean, because this was basically, they take her likeness. So, um, but yeah, uh, so that game was so, I like the multiplayer on Battlefront 2, but the story was a disaster. It was an absolute disaster. Um, Party um, CV said, uh, beaten by a long eyed with no car, you failed. <laughs> there we go. Gunman Kershaw said, hey guys, good to see you, all you fine gentlemen. If you could uh, be one faction from Star Wars, what would it be? The Jedi, the Bounty Hunters, the Sith, etc.? Will be your favorite I, faction. I, 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 I've never been a fan of, of having to be part of the Jedi just because of the rules and, and all that. Um, I mean, I, I, and. I guess if I had to pick it out of the jet at Jedi or the Empire, I'd pick Empire. Like I don't I don't like the Jedi and their ways. I like I like hooking up with women and doing my thing and jerking off and you know, I'm sure a drinker wants to drink beer, you know. Uh, yeah, I think hammered, I, so. Sith is Sith is the way forward for me. Yeah, like they're yeah. all about like just, you know, quick and easy path to power, like indulgence, yeah, and, having fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all in. Someone in chat said, Mola, as needs a bleedy sword thingy. He he is sad, not good at video games. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if they think no one's reading. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's the next one? So, Nabor605 said, Disney subverted our expectations of quality films. They, they really did. Yeah. Um, yes, they did. Hangry is angry. Said, just wait. I think Disney will reboot the series about the time Ewan hit sixty-five or seventy. Love your show, by the way. Uh, yeah, just just keep going as long as they're Dude, alive. He, just keep doing reboots with them. When he gets up to late sixties, they'll just be making an Obi Wan TV show. You know, before Luke, but just before New Hope, and he'll go on some crazy fucking adventure. He'll be like Picard. Oh, no, God. no, no. You know what they'll do? They'll they'll have him survive his brush with Vader and he'll just reanimate somewhere else and be like, oh, okay, it's time to go on some more adventures. The trailer will be like, you thought the Kenobi story was over, but have we got news for you? And then it'll tie into Mando and Boba Fett and that, that post like don't, return. Don't of forget the Jedi about his, era. his secret mission on the Galactic Star Cruiser. Yeah. That's going to be an, <laughs> an episode too. Oh God. 
it's, it's going to happen. Um, Primer said, in a cosmic sort of way, I think we exhausted all of our luck on the Lord of the Rings trilogy. We got three perfect movies released back to back. With no luck left to draw from, the universe gave us Disney Star Wars. <laughs> It does feel like it? we we owed the gods for that one, didn't we? They're that like, is true. Have that for free. And we we're like, okay. I agree they with that. To collect. Um, They've Greg to Marquez. Collect. <laughs> I hope it says not enough inclusivity. You can do better. I guess that's the the automated system that that tells you if you're um, diverse enough in your screenplay. Uh, Thank goodness that exists. I know, but. It, it's so great to see art distilled down to a fucking computerized algorithm. That, <laughs> that's that's well, literally that's what, what it is love, now. right? People love that. Yeah. yeah. Pretty sure. Um, just make yeah. it as safe and, and predictable as possible. Um, Cody Griffin says, great to see you all. I was curious about your thoughts on the Hyperion's and Daily Wire production movies uh, in direct opposition to Hollywood and should more companies push back by making their own products? Um, I think they absolutely should. I love no what Daily Wire's doing. I love what Daily Wire's doing, and you know, I think that it's a uh, it's inspiring because it's giving a it, it's you know, I mean, you can't just compare what they're doing to like a massively budgeted Hollywood film at this point, but they're putting stuff out there and they're they're beginning the steps, and I'm very happy and very excited for what they're doing. So, it's, I love it. We need have you seen Shut In at all? Huh. Shut in like the the new Daily Wire um, movie. I, I they, not I, I didn't I watched it when it premiered. I watched about <clears throat> uh, thirty minutes of it when they premiered it on the YouTube channel. I haven't gone back and watched the rest of it yet, but it did look pretty good. So. Wait, they they premiere the movies on YouTube? Yeah, they, yeah, they premiered like uh, I don't think they did the whole thing. I think they, they did, did like they did the whole was movie. Was the whole thing okay? Because yeah. I know like immediately after it was it was available to the members. Because I'm a I'm a you know annual subscriber to the Daily Wire when they brought Gina Carano in. So um, so I have access to all of that. So, but yeah, they did. They premiered it on YouTube. It was uh, it was okay, but it has its problems. Uh, like particularly because she's trapped in a room and she gets the guy's hand, and she stakes it into the ground. And I'm thinking, why don't you just slit the guy's wrist? You know, it's all gonna be over. But I, it, it it's it's a lot better than some of the other stuff out there. So, hmm. it's a good start. It's a good start. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Because I watched um, Run, Hide, Fight. Um, and I, similar situation, I think that had problems in terms of the plot and stuff. And it was very much like Die Hard in a school. But um, there was good aspects to it as well. I think the main character was pretty well written um, and played by a really good actress who just really sold the part. Um, but again, it just feels like the growing pains of a, a, a company that doesn't quite know how they want to do things yet and they don't have the, the slick production values of of Hollywood. Um, so it's still a little bit of experimental now. But I like the mm -hmm. idea of, of smaller studios like this, like, you know, giving a counterpoint to like the, the crap that you get out of Hollywood now. So hopefully they, they keep doing it. Oh, Stone Cold learning. Stone Cold's beer says that it a new one premieres tonight at it 8 does. 30. it does it's premiering a few hours what is it they're a new film hyperions hyperions mm -hmm. okay okay uh yeah there's um okay fair it is and stone cold coming back to wrestlemania too stone cold's beer cooler yeah, what so. the fuck man <laughs> i i, was I thought he like doesn't have... he having like a broken neck and stuff yeah. like yeah he's still alive I, is he? <laughs> I, I i i was not expecting this uh, now i don't watch current wwe anyway but i mean i'm a stone cold I'm, legend I you know if he doesn't fan. come back and really nail it because of all the criticism that he gave hulk hogan mm -hmm. coming back and wrestling and not yeah really... see my worry is he's gonna like phone it in for like a couple of minutes and do fuck all and I... then just do, do his, his beer thing and then just See, leave. I, I I listen to Stone Cold's podcast a lot, and Stone Cold is very much like not about cheap pops, not about getting out there and just getting the cheap moments. And so for this decision, it's just it's very strange. So, um, I now and I see a couple people saying he's not going to wrestle, and I did hear people on my when I was live. Some there was the, there were different there were different reports, but I saw official media yeah. reports. That he Coming will back. wrestle Kevin Owens. Yep. But I saw that was, too. But then You're JR said something. JR was saying Jim Ross came out and said something that, that had people talking. So I'm kind of confused right now. Again, I don't keep up with the current product, 
So I don't know. I'm always, yeah, I'm always wary of these guys that come back after like 10 years of being yeah. out of the ring. Like, fuck, man. I remember when Ultimate Warrior came back and I was well excited. It's to awful. See him and fucking hobbled into the <laughs> ring like just an old man. I was like, oh, shit, man. To be fair, he was, to be fair, he was never a great wrestler anyway. He, he true, was, a, no, energy, he he was a good energy. showman. Yeah, his, yeah, yeah his thing was he was all about the energy and the sheer fucking power because he was a bodybuilder. And like, yeah. To, to lose that, like you don't have your gimmick anymore, you know. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was do you just remember when that when they did the fake uh, Ultimate Wrestler and they hyped it up like he was coming back and the Renegade? Yeah, it was the Renegade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was brilliant, that was man. Bad. That was bad. <laughs> it really messed up that guy's career, though. I watched a, a some documentary and they talked about you know how he fell out after that and. Well, yeah, if that was it's your one gimmick and then like you blew it or, you know, it just never took off, like that's that's all you got. And then you're just going to get cast aside. Um, but then I think that was around about the same time that Warrior went into WCW and he fought Hulk Hogan. And it was like one of the worst matches I've ever seen because it was like two wrestlers wrestling completely different matches at the same time in the same ring. It was the most embarrassing fucking spectacle I think I've seen ever. Um, I yeah, just I just, look, just, to, just to back it up, but Stone Cold released a Stone Cold Steve Austin released a a whole promo about this. The wording is kind of strange because uh, basically heading to Texas for WrestleMania 38, bringing one last can of whoop ass. See you there, fight Owens, fight, and that's the bottom line. Uh, Stone Cold or Steve Austin BSR has accepted fight Owens, fight WrestleMania invitation. WrestleMania invitation, but but he's saying I'm gonna bring one last can of whoop. I don't know. It's the wording is kind of strange. So wrestling fans, if you're in the chat, you know, let us know. Is he actually fighting, or is it just gonna be a show up? Uh, yeah, it's like has, has this thing been built up in like you know? It hasn't school? been the, the build up hadn't been there to my knowledge. So this is came out of nowhere. Maybe he's just gonna be a special referee. I don't know. It just yeah, it, it's kind it, of weird because it's like he would have had to made some appearances before now to like get some kind of build up for it and like start a rivalry. Like Kevin Owens okay, wouldn't have just been here, like, here oh is. yeah, I want to fight, yeah. I want to fight Stone Cold. Okay, here, yeah, here sure. we go. Kevin Owens gave him an invitation to be on his KO show. He didn't challenge him to a one on one match. They are playing this up big time. ESPN even retweeted or tweeted out. They were like. Stone Cold returns to the ring for one last time and the first time in 19 years. So the, the reports have been all over the place. Wow. Huh. 19 years. Uh, so I guess he's <laughs> not going to wrestle. I think this is my favorite. I love it when Vince made out with Trish in front of his wheelchair <laughs> by the <my> wife. <laughs> God bless you, Vince. Never change. <laughs> I mean, if Trish Stratus is in front of you, you would. Like, let's be honest, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, yeah, so, sorry for the confusion. I don't know. Yeah. I, I have no idea what's happening. So it looked, the reports were that he was coming back to the ring, but I guess he's not, at least wrestling. So, Okay. Um, Michael Loparco, he said, uh, if you want to know why companies need to adhere to their ESG scores, so that's like, was it environmental, social, and uh, something else governmental that's a whole um, that's a long conversation esg yeah it's a whole um, like credit system that they're trying to do yep uh yeah it's a social credit system for companies it really isn't it yeah um esg scores are pushed by the world economic forum look it up uh yeah i'm kind of aware of what what it is um and it's something that i've encountered a little bit in recent months with some of the stuff i've been doing um yeah it's it's a weird thing um Nabor605 said, uh, Shang-Chi will be heralded as the first Asian superhero, but Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Guardians of the Galaxy 2 already did that years ago with Quake and Mantis. Um, no. Indeed they did. Because no. that doesn't work right now with what we're trying to say, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> <Yeah>. Black Panther, <laughs> the first black people on screen. <laughs> Just... Forget about previous product and confer. Uh, sorry, and consume new product. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I mean, yeah, we're gonna. It's gonna be marketed that this is gonna be the first time Vader and Obi Wan have ever fought ever. <laughs> yeah. Ever, you know, like it's just. <laughs> it, 
And if you say that they have, then you're just bigoted and racist. <laughs> like, wait, what? No, I'm just referencing the fact that they actually have. You know what? Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, Stuyvesant B also said diversity and good storytelling is simply too much to handle for most games or movies studios nowadays. Um, CD Projekt Red, hold my beer. I'll not let go, <laughs> drinker. Um, Nabor605 said best part of the first Suicide Squad was the Batman part. I mean, there's not many good parts of the first Suicide Squad movie, to be fair, but yeah. No. I like that movie, but I think it's a bad movie. But I yeah. do enjoy. I did enjoy Suicide Squad for the most part, but I thought it was a very sloppy and terribly structured movie. Do you think we'll ever get the air cut? Would that really Honestly, even make it better? Yeah. I mean, I, I've learned to never say never when it comes to these things. So I just, who knows? Yeah. DC. Yeah. DC is more confusing than a woman at this point. I have no idea what they're going to do on any, any given day. So, yeah, um, they just yeah, kicked the, the comic the, book branch out of the prestigious offices and moved them down the road to like a little warehouse office. I, <laughs> yeah. I just I, I love the idea too. that they've just they've they've taken the whole concept of this extended universe and just said, "Nah, fuck it," and we're just going to have a bunch <laughs> of like standalone movies. Like they're all doing their own thing. Whatever. Just don't think about it too much. Um, what was the next one? Woke Hogan said, uh, Cavill should be a bigger star than Dwayne the Tooth Fairy Johnson, but The Rock um, toes the line, so here we are. Yeah, people have said that they've mm -hmm. got the same agent as well, and that's why like The Rock gets all the best roles and Cavill kind of gets relegated to second place. Sounds man, about right. The Rock new is agent, like, man. Um, almost the representative for actor right now in Hollywood. He's so harmless and fine for entertainment you know which is why yeah. like red we've talked about it before wait was it it wasn't called red red notice that was it right red notice yeah it's a fucking like it's a it's a film that was made in the lab by a bunch of scientists trying to figure out what is the movie that can just it could just be successful but no one will ever know what it was even about Phil Mento did a good video about this actually where he was basically saying like everyone in it like none of them are actors; they're all just playing themselves. You know, like the the Rock is basically just playing every character that he's ever played. You know, he's just the the sort of cool, confident government guy. Um, Gal Gadot is just playing like the the likable, beautiful, exotic, you know, femme fatale, or at least trying to. Ryan Reynolds is just being Ryan Reynolds, just the wise cracking mm -hmm. asshole. You know, and it's the movie that doesn't have characters, it just has um what would you even call it? Just just personalities. Generic? Yeah, it's just personalities, really. Like everyone's playing a, a, a just a variation of their own personality. And that's how you end up with it. Like it, it's not really a movie in the normal sense. Well, I mean, I don't, um, I don't have anything against The Rock, but I agree with the fact that he's pretty just gener generic for the most part. I, I enjoy a lot of his films, but I don't think Cav Cavill's... I'm not saying Cavill's the best actor in Hollywood, but if you put Cavill uh, against somebody, some of the big names in Hollywood, I, I think he's far and away the, the better of some of the bigger names. Hmm. Like, I personally think Christian Bale's the best actor, you know, or at least the most versatile actor, you know what I mean? Maybe maybe he's and I haven't seen him do a lot of the versatile stuff in the last few years. But if you look at all of the crazy shit that dude's done, but he's not a mega star like Henry Cavill. He's a star, but he doesn't have that next level star power. I love it when he yells at people on set. That's yeah. the best role he's ever had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do my scene with Bryce. <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant. Uh, but yeah, The Rock is just, he, he knows exactly the kind of niche to play. He's much more American now, Christian Bale, his like default accent, I think, isn't he? Yeah. Do, like, yeah. A British one. yeah. It's like that mid-Atlantic accent where he can kind of switch between American and British, like just depends what kind of mood he's in. Hmm. Yep. Uh, God, his freak out on Terminator Salvation is still the best thing ever, so. Yeah. 
I, do, I always love it when someone's ranting right and you think they've simmered down and then they decide nah i'm gonna have yeah, another fucking yeah, crack at this going, That's just, every time you think he stopped on that rant he just gets worked up again you know <laughs> so good it's like i'm not done i'm not done destroying this guy yet <laughs> some people because i mean christian like like people are always like like uh, Christian Bale's been my favorite actor since I think since I, the first time I saw Equilibrium. Uh, that's when he became my favorite actor. I loved that movie so much, still love it. But so I've, I've this is before he was even in Batman, and so all these years, and you know, I feel like I'd love to meet my favorite. If I'm scared to meet Christian Bale, I don't want to meet Christian Bale, and if he doesn't cuss me out, I will be disappointed. So I don't, I don't want him to be nice. I want him to be like, get the fuck out of my way. You know, I just want him to scream at me. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I still love the the meme from like uh, American Psycho where they're all trading business cards and like yeah. you know, he's just freaking out because the guy's got the best business card ever. <laughs> Brilliant <laughs> stuff. <laughs> the best meme that was created of that one. I don't know if you guys want me to show it to you or not. Have you seen the Bill O'Reilly versus Christian Bale freak out? Uh, I don't think oh, so. I've no. seen it. Yeah. I, can I show it to you? It, it's I think so, so yeah. It, it's so good. It's worth it. It's worth it. Hang on, I gotta find it. Versus fail. It's only. It's not long. So um, it's a minute thirty three. Here we go. This is so. You, have you ever seen the Inside Edition Bill O'Reilly freak out? I've seen the Bill O'Reilly one. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, okay. So. So, so somebody does a mashup of of the two right here. here All right. Go. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Right. <laughs> That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, I don't know. Whatever it is, it's not right on the teleprompter. I don't know what that is. I've never seen that. I want you off the fucking set, you prick. Okay, but <laughs> okay. now I can't read it. There's no, there's no words on it. What don't you fucking understand? There's no words there to play us out. What does that mean? To play us out? Fuck sake, man, you're amateur. What don't you? <laughs> Are you professional or not? I don't know what that means to play us <laughs> up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> You're unbelievable, man. You're unfucking believable. That's tomorrow, and that is. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a fucking answer. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a. I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. Hey, let's go again. We'll do it live. Fuck it. <laughs> do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Oh, good for you. Fucking thing sucks. The fucking kick your <laughs> fucking ass. You don't <laughs> shut up for a second, all right? <laughs> That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching. We'll leave you with Sting and a cut off his new album. Take it away. Stay off the fucking set, man. Listen, man, you and me, we're fucking done professionally. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. legendary right there. That is legendary. Uh, that's brilliant. Uh, I remember when Family Guy did a riff on this as well, where it's like Peter Griffin talking to Christian Bale. And it's like, seriously, you and me are done professionally. It appears yeah. like, but we can still hang out after work, right? <laughs> Ah, da -da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> oh good for you and how oh, was it <laughs> good for you <laughs> I'll, I'll do i'll do a couple more super chats and then finish it up uh, yeah. yeah um alex's channel said david Thewlis was a good aries in wonder woman that uh 2017 um yeah a wicked tash in that man was he a good aries I think he was just playing David Thewlis for most of it, and then he went. He did all those funny lines in the third act, if you remember. It's the bit where he has to say, "Like then I will destroy you." He says, um, <laughs> he says something like, "You know, I realize now that we can, through love, we can win the day." And his response is, "Lies." <laughs> Which is like, what the fuck are we doing? The villain being like, no, love is bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see, Sean, uh, the Bale versus Tom Cruise one is fantastic as well. Uh, that one's really good. So there's a lot of good mashups. Uh, 
Mahler, do your southern accent. Go do it. Do it, Mahler. It's good. It's good. We do it's what? Good. Come on. Do your southern accent. Oh, they're talking about like the friendly reviewer guy. He's like, hey, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> We're going to be talking all <laughs> kinds of things today. That Kenobi trailer, that looks good, huh? I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you should sure do entire have plenty to talk about. <laughs> you should do entire reviews like that. That's so good. <laughs> uh, He's just a friendly guy. How could you be mad at that guy? You know, just, yeah, just just happy, just happy to be there. Happy to work. Happy to be working. That Boba um, Fett show. They sure worked hard on that. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever <laughs> Mahler, like we had Disparu on Tuesday night's main event a few weeks ago, and it, it automatically it just it just makes us sound smarter when somebody like Disparu or Mahler Mahler's on it. Just you know, it just makes us sound more intelligent, more respectable. So the poor drunken <laughs> Scottish guy, they're like, well, it's fucking fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't think anyone brings me into their streams looking for intelligence. To be fair. <laughs> um. The White Line Fever gave me twenty dollars. Cheers, matey. Thanks for that. Um, JS Pena said T Rex arms can lift four hundred pounds. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Rob the Builder said hello there, drinker and guests. I ditched work early to go watch Batman in an empty IMAX theater. Why was it empty? Uh, so I sadly can't stick around. Drinker plushie soon. Yeah, the plushie should be round about now. Actually, I think that's oh, when they're sweet. meant to be shipping. So nice. if you if you guys out there if you've ordered a plushie it should be with you shortly, um, yeah. Uh, Mikey Gussler said, "I like all of you guys, but you're all wrong about Man of Steel and Batman versus Superman. Just so you're all aware, carry on." <laughs> Mikey will never ever stop the passion, and I love it. I, I, I was gonna say it. he's right. We uh, we have been wrong. They are abysmal. They're not just bad. Like yeah, they they're are, they're perfect. <laughs> horrible they're truly so, terrible yeah, i agree we could have been asha but we were being kind uh, you know, <laughs> well we're well known there. for being really forgiving and and yes. you know easy going on movies so yeah yeah makes sense uh, <laughs> brilliant <laughs> uh, <laughs> um white line fever said hey drinker are you going to review hyperions I feel like a must now. yeah that's yeah. a daily wire one um, Primer said, uh, do you guys think Avatar 2 will cross the 1 billion mark? I mean, I'd be surprised if it Maybe. didn't really. The other it's one did a, you know, it's, it's such a strange situation with that because it's uh, it did such insane numbers, but it doesn't carry like any cultural significance. No one's dressed up as Avatar. No one, you know, has I can't even name a character in the film. You know what I mean? Rufus. No, I have only since so, uh, who? Rufus. Is that a character? <laughs> I, I've seen it once, so in theaters, that's it. Hey, but look, I was guessing, okay, there's yeah. got to be more of a roof <laughs> a character, I think. I want to see an un, un, unbridled rage for uh, Avatar two. That would be great. So I don't, I just can't imagine getting passionate about Avatar. But <laughs> I know, uh, I know. Maybe who knows? I, you know? I just, but it. There must be something to it because James Cameron's devoted like the past ten years of his life to this thing. Yeah. yeah, and he can make stuff, right? It's an interesting world, but I don't care about it. <laughs> that makes yeah. sense. I just like, I I just don't care about it. You know what it is though? It it's it's only interesting because it looks visually appealing. You know, I never look at Pandora and I think, oh, well, fucking hell, what a fan! Like, what a fantastically interesting place. You know, like right. how well developed it is. It's just, it looks pretty. You yeah. know, it, it's got the floating islands. That, they don't make any sense, but who cares? It's got like flying <laughs> dinosaurs that you can ride. Okay, they, they look cool. And where, where did they come from? It doesn't matter. Each other to sex or whatever. What, do you think the sequels are ever going to come out? I mean, yeah. I, I guess. Is anyone going to care? <laughs> no. But, well. <laughs> I don't know I do what th magic was pulled in the first one to make it as successful as it was. The but 3D, I, guess... I think it was the first was 3D really movie. And there, there were, I, like, at that level, I think, like, yeah. it was being promoted as a huge 3D thing. And I don't think there was really any competition for that movie, like, a, a big window of but, nothing. 
it, it it was word of mouth though. It didn't even open up that strong. It just it just kept going. I going never I I didn't I've watched that movie one time and I was underwhelmed and have no I, yeah, desire to watch it again. I, I agree. About, yeah, that movie is such a maybe I shouldn't use numbers to confuse it, but I was about to say it's such a five out of ten in terms of just all right. Well, anyway, well, yeah, <laughs> like, I. I, I it, it was big dynamic. at the time because there hadn't been anything like it you, uh, with these fantastic visuals like the 3d like all of that stuff was kind of new and it just it absolutely just caught a wave that was going on at the time now you've had a dozens of movies that have equaled that visually and so it's not going to be impressive anymore and i just think with the new one yeah like the all the hype from the original is long since gone. Nobody is fucking passionate about Avatar anymore. It's not like it's not like Lord of the Rings. It's not like fucking Harry Potter or anything like that, where it's got an enduring fan base. Well, that's the thing. I don't think anybody was passionate about it even a year after it came out. Like I just don't think it ever had a fan base. Which is such crazy, a weird movie. There was a hype, right? Like I'm not imagining this. There was like fans of it, but they all died out instantly. I don't really remember fans of it either. I'm not saying they didn't exist. I'm just saying I don't remember it. Like I don't remember it like, either. I, I just like, like I a... remember Twilight fans. Okay, I remember there being Twilight fans. I think we all remember that shit. Um, and, and I remember other films that even didn't have a you know massive hub. Like even something like Suicide Squad. You know, everybody had their Harley Quinn cosplay or or whatever. You know what I mean? I never saw fandom for this movie ever. No. Yeah, um, but that's just. I don't know. It's strange. I never went to a convention or, or recall conventions where I saw like people dressed up as avatar people or whatever. Maybe it's because it's so difficult that they couldn't do it, but they didn't even have the Walmart versions, you know? So, uh, I'll do the last one here. Um, Charles Hurst, he gave me a $50 super sticker. So thank you very much, my friend. Very much appreciate your generosity. Um, but yeah, I think the, like, uh, most of the time, uh, I'm not going to get through all the super chats tonight. I will catch up on them probably on Sunday night and, and finish this up. Um, but yeah, I want to say thank you to all my awesome guests that have come in tonight. I know Chris has had to bail out, but uh, Jeremy, Yellow Flash, like, thanks to you guys for coming in tonight, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for oh, having me. Thank yeah, it was awesome being here. Yeah. Um, and yeah, is there anything you guys have got coming up you want to make us aware of? Like anything you got planned? Just uh, obviously be on Friday Night Tice tomorrow, our Nerdrotics channel. Um, and then Tuesday night's main event every Tuesday on the Geeks and Gamers channel. It's our, uh, it's our weekly live stream where we uh, talk about all ki- type of stuff. So check us out over there. Nice, man. Uh, Yellow Flash, you got anything you want to you make us aware of? Every Saturday I have my Flashcast stream. You never know what's going to happen. Jeremy, Jeremy never, knows this. Never know what's going to happen. <laughs> <on that. laughs> and then... Uh, I, sh- I should have called my show Open Bar Shit. <laughs> yeah, well, I've trademarked it now, so you've been hearing from my lawyers otherwise. <laughs> um, also, uh, I'm on Twitch quite a bit now. I've been trying to build that up. I'll be on there probably tonight playing Elden Ring, so check that out. Yellow nice. Flash TWO, because somebody nice. took the two. Uh, Elden Ring, okay. that's some new video game or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I've heard I've heard about it. Here it's, yeah, I hear sure it's all fun. You're, you're, you're going to be on it in about five minutes now. <laughs> you, you underestimate my power. What do you think I've been doing this whole stream? <laughs> yeah, I know that. That's why you've been so quiet. God damn it. I have discussed many a thing with this, these wonderful gentlemen who have come on. Really good to meet you, Jeremy. Uh, yeah, it's you, great to meet like you. A fun guy. Um, yeah, I'm been, glad I could been, finally bring you guys together. Yeah. Been really wanting to stream with you for a long time. Um, I, I've just I enjoyed you. I've been, yeah, all the racism stuff. You know, I was just like, ugh. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally understand that. Yeah, um, yeah. But luckily now I'm not the most racist person at Geeks and Gamers. Yeah, so yeah now we cool. can, you know, So now I can hang out with you. So. The that's, heat that's has been taken off. Ryan Ku Klux Kennel. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, it's kind of good that he didn't come on. Actually, my my stream would have just got instantly demonetized. Like, yeah. oh shit! Known racist Ryan Kennel is on your stream. 
Uh, no, but thank, thank you guys and uh yeah thanks to everyone in chat i hope you've enjoyed yourselves this evening hope we've given you a bit of entertainment and thank you for all the awesome super chats it's always appreciated um and yeah thanks to my mod team that's uh done their usual awesome work i appreciate all you guys for for everything you do so yeah it's been great tonight and uh yeah i guess that's all we've got for this evening so 